in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Open up your mouth and bless him in the spirit. The entrance of your word. Spirit of the living God, we bless you. Are you praying in the spirit? Shadaba Ladaba Radusha. Kaprondo Sodobra Katushana You're edifying your spirit. Pray in spirit. Edify in your spirit. Low, low, low like a mighty spirit of victory.
presence of God is mighty in this place. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you first to God, second to the world. I commend you first to God, then second to the world. I commend you. I transfer responsibility for the results in your life first to God. Like you transfer a small child and say, from now, take care of him. And God is saying, Paul is speaking and say, I commend you first to God, to, to the word. It says that that word is able, hmm, is able, does not outsource power from any other place. In itself, it is able to build you up. Number one. Number two, it says it is able to give. The word can give things to men. It is able to build you up, then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. He says, I commend you first to God. Then I commend you to the word. He says that that word is able to build you. To build you means to translate you. To take you to a dimension higher than your prior experience. And then as a reward for staying, he says it will give you an inheritance. Something provable. Something demonstrable. That everyone will know that this one would only have come if a man met God and met his word. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I have come. I have come to encounter God and encounter the word. I trust in the ability of the word to build you. It is able to build you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening. Please be seated. One of the things that I pray will continue to happen to us is that God by His Spirit will continue to grant us the comprehension of the value of the word of God in the life of a believer. It's not enough to just believe that the word of God is God's word. You must believe that the word of God contains within itself an ability and that the word of God is able to make men if received. It says he came to his own and his own received him not. Then it says, but as many as received him. Anything received can be rejected. Is that true? As many as received him, even to them that believed on his name, the Bible says he gave them power to become. Power to become. Nobody is made by default. My brothers and my sisters, listen. Saul does not become Paul just by default. There is a system in the kingdom that makes men. There's nothing wrong with the way you come. Except that if you are willing to engage in the systems of the kingdom, then there is a guarantee that the word of God, God who is the owner of the word, and the word of God commended to you. You know, many times we talk about the word of God, the power of the word, but the truth is that we have not educated people enough to see the value in the word of God. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible says in John chapter 1, the gospel of John chapter 1, the Bible says, in the beginning, listen, was the word. And it says the word was with God. Then it says the word was God. It says that he was with God in the beginning. Now here's the part. It says through him all things. How many things? Now, when the Bible tells you something made everything, you should respect it. Are we together now? Yes. 
that all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made without him without the word was not anything made that was made without the word was not any destiny that was made without the word was not any life that was made without the word was not any man of god that was made that means when you have the word you have the ability to manipulate anything created by the word are we together now when the bible tells you he wants to give you what created the heavens and the earth it means that he's giving you access is a scepter of dominion that with this word when he grants it unto you then you will be able to tame life and operate at a dimension and at a frequency that will dumbfound principalities and powers now truthfully speaking it may take a while you see because God is not a magician. It's a system. That means your participation is required. But that line upon line. My brothers and my sisters, let me give you a guarantee. And I tell you this in the name of the Lord. If you listen to the things that I teach you. And you open up your heart in all sincerity to receive. There is no power in existence that sustains the ability to put down your destiny. It's a matter of time. Forget about the things you do not see and focus on what God is giving you. What God is giving you is greater than any car you can buy. Trust me. You must have something greater than material things to get material things. You can't have something less than material things and then have these things. God is if all God gives you now is a car and a house and money he cheated you. He will give you something that will compel the gentiles to come to your light and even their kings to the brightness of your rising are we together now there is nothing in the bible that is a true blessing that is physical listen carefully there is nothing in the bible that is given physical like you give someone something physical you, you may call it a blessing but all blessings are spiritual all blessings the bible says that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places and in christ we reign in this kingdom by the access to the light that we have unfortunately Please pay attention, especially for those outside. Unfortunately, men are so result conscious that they understand spiritual things too late. The system of the kingdom is such that until the tree is established before fruits come out. So if all you are looking for is just result, you may, be, you may miss a major part of the dealings of God. God is working something in your life and there's still a rent issue waiting. And then the devil will use manipulate because you see, let me tell you this. The domain of the senses is where Satan dwells. He is the master of the sense realm. He knows that the natural man is governed by the impulses, the sensory perceptions that come from his environment. So he will try to manipulate what is there or not there and use it to probe and discredit the integrity of what God is doing in your life. If it is true you are receiving favor, where is it? And you stand and say, boy, it's true. Oh, Kai, God, you serve. I just finished seven days dry fasting and it was by the mercy of God I met my roommate almost finishing his gari. Are we together now? And the devil cheats you because he's a master of the sense realm. But do you not know the Bible says while we look not at the things which are seen, the things which are seen, you don't look at them but you can look at the things that are unseen because the things that are seen are temporal say temporal poverty temporal low levels in the spirit temporal he said but the things that are unseen they are eternal so we must be spiritual and by spiritual it means that we use the word of god as our new plane 
our perception becomes a derivative of the integrity of God's word, not our experiences. Your experience at this level does not capture enough to prove that God is faithful. So if you depend on your experiences, you will see gaps in, supposed gaps in the faithfulness of God. You will see obvious things God did not do, supposedly. So you take your mind, your life is too small to just try to create a system of vetting God's integrity. You use the word of God and say, Lord, my life may not have A, B, and C yet, but I know from the integrity of your word that you do not fail. And not even my own experience is enough to discredit your integrity. You have cheated Satan when you get to that level. Because Satan will never be able to manipulate you until he uses something that is obvious in your life. Where is the money if you say God is faithful? Where is the anointing? You are a man of God and you claim God has raised you to be a prophet to the nations. In one year, nobody invited you for anything. Is it really true that the hand of God is at work in you? Where are the Gentiles that should come to your light? At first, you will claim you have faith. But the reality of the lack of demand on your grace will sit down and discourage you. And he said, am I called or what? If it's a demonic attack, let me know. And repent and just find somewhere. But I mean, am I called? And God says, just listen to me. But if you continue staying, my brothers and my sisters, one day it will do you like a dream. You will wake up one day into a dimension of the spirit that you will have to step back and join others to say, Lord, what is this? And then men will say, like they always say, he came out of nowhere. And God will say, keep quiet. Nobody comes out of nowhere. He says, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. If, if you give yourself halfway, hoping so that if it fails, at least you can put your leg somewhere. It, it doesn't work like that. Let me tell you. You throw yourself in this thing and say, if I perish, I perish. This, this scientific Christianity, I know God is faithful, but let me patch him with an uncle. So one leg is here, one leg. So that whatever happens, your ego is not stung. And that very ego is why you may never see the power of God. Because you have not proven to God that you have thrown all to him. And you just come and say, God, if you don't help me, I don't have an option. God says, this is what I like. Now that you have stepped aside, let me show you that I'm a great God. Are we blessed tonight? I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you. You know, most believers don't know why the church is mandated to meet frequently. Even pastors, most men of God don't know why they hold weekly fellowships. Others think we hold weekly fellowships so that at least there will be resources to run the ministry um, for, for the week or the month. Because every time people gather, they drum the fact that you shouldn't come before God empty-handed. So they think that the regular convergence of believers is just a system of generating revenue for the church. It may not be entirely true. The regular convergence of believers is a system designed in the intelligence of God. It's one of the ways that the church is built. One of the ways that the church matures. Because every time we gather together, among the many things that happen, number one, there is an opportunity for an encounter with the Spirit of God. That's entirely spiritual. Are we together now? And then number two, an opportunity to learn the ways of God. To learn the ways of God. Life will not excuse you for what you do not know. Life treats those who disobey and those who don't know in the same category. I'm passionate about what I do not know. I'm passionate about the danger I may submit myself to, not knowing what I should know. And so my heart is always panting to find out, Lord, thank you for what you have shown me. But what else do I not know? If you do not know, look at me for instance. If I'm standing at the edge of this stage, and I do not even know that there is a depression here that can throw me down. I'm just shifting innocently. The depression will not think that just because I'm not aware, it will not touch me. I will fall and it can kill me. Is that true? 
So when someone tells you, hey, hold on. When you get here, stand. That knowledge has delivered you. Is that true? So we come for a convergence like this because it is an opportunity for God to expose us to the ways of God. And then it is an opportunity to experience the power of God in the midst of his people. It's, 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 it's not going to be possible to present a God that you have not tasted of the possibilities that are contained in him. It's one thing to know that the possibilities of God are encapsulated in this Bible. But it's another thing for your life to at least have a taste of it. You don't need to experience everything. But that God does something in your life that you can now say, Kai, God, now I know. I know. So the next time you are talking to someone and says, which God? You say, no, forget about the apostle. Look at my life. I'm now a testimony, an epistle that God is able to do this and that. Hallelujah. There is a spirit that makes believers to not focus on the ministry of the word. The spirit of distraction. You can even come to church and you'll be surprised that just because you are sitting and looking, you are learning. No. The Bible says that the sower sows the word. Right there, Satan is in the midst of, of, of God's people. Roaming around and looking for careless hearts. And he comes by himself and takes the word. So that you are ever learning. Oh, this topic. Ah, I know it. I remember Genesis chapter this verse this. But there is no evidence that shows that this has become spirit and life in you. So please let's challenge ourselves and say, Lord, it is true that I don't serve you just for results. But Lord, I'm determined. I'm determined to begin to see your hand in my life. If you see God's hand in one, two, three areas and remaining four, five, six, you are encouraged. But where you get zero over six of God's hand is not enough testimony. Are we together? It is the word of God that builds. It is the word of God that gives men allocations in this kingdom. Like a domain. And the word of God allocates you. Come darling. And says you stand here. Come my dear. Stand here. Come. This is your place of dominion. You have believed in me enough. The word of God gives you your allocation in life. So this person starts somewhere and God says there is a seat I have given you in the prophetic. And the word of God gives you that position. You stay there and you know it's an office backed up by God himself. No man will be able to stand against you. This one was apportioned by the spirit as a testimony not of your desire for ministry. Listen, as a testimony of your staying power with God. For as a prince you have power with God. You can roam around and say, God has called me into business. Life drives you out. You come again and say, God called me into family. And you roam around life and there is no space for you. He dug a well, they came and covered it. They say it's not your space. He dug another well, they covered it. When he dug the first one, they gave him space. And he called it Rehoboth. He said, God has given me my own space. You need to have your own place in life dominion is territorial until you find your jurisdiction of dominion you cannot begin to walk in it you will hate people you will be angry you will quarrel people you will hate others that god is blessing in their area of dominion it is the word of god that allocates while the word of god is being taught mystery after mystery principle after principle the spirit of god is using the word to give men spiritual jurisdictions of power and relevance and so this lady hears that god is distributing this and then the call of god upon her life locate her in the place of the call and this one hears that god is lifting people in the area of business and god keeps her there and by the time these people have been around god for a long time you look at them and you see the grace of their office established in that dimension 
this roaming around of believers without knowing the jurisdiction of your spiritual relevance is dangerous because satan can also mimic god and carry you somewhere that the equipping the wiring the spiritual configuration within you should not it does not allow you to be there and so they carry you and you die because you want to prophesy are we together now because the word of god did not give you the balance and the proper allocation your ego allocated you to a dimension you don't have grace for every prophecy you lied every prophetic command never came to pass and you find out you are frustrated and you stand and say lord what am i doing with my life I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you egg, lava, pupa, adult and then when you are now mature to give you a space are you getting what I'm saying now? an allocation yes you're a medical doctor but I give you a space that you will carry the healing anointing to the nations you may be a doctor professionally but your destiny demands that you are working in this. How you know you are making progress in the spirit is that somewhere along the lines of your experience, you begin to see these spiritual allocations. You can know. God, where are you taking me to? Just follow. It first starts as a general prayer. It first starts as just studying the word of God to know him. Let me tell you, there is nobody that God puts ministry consciousness in him before he calls him. That's wrong training. The, you start on a neutral ground. Lord, I love you. I need your presence. I need your glory. Not I need a church. Not I need a title. Not I need a PA. Not Lord, I've suffered in this family. Won't I be rich? No, sir. God does not define the geography of men's assignments first. He allows them to begin to seek him on a neutral ground. And then on, on grounds of their faithfulness, when their hearts are locked to him, then the spiritual jurisdiction of their assignment, he starts to allocate it. And many times, depending on the jurisdiction, there are jurisdictions that will necessitate that you touch other dimensions before finally getting there. So God is calling you into an apostolic ministry, but you will start as an evangelist. For two years, you will be an evangelist. And then you will switch and be a teacher. And then you will be like a missionary. The final destination is here. By the time you build a camp there, I am evangelist Emeka. By the time that apostolic grace is coming, you will cause confusion. Because you are among evangelists, but they know that what you are doing is not evangelism. And you will start teaching based on your experience. And you will start saying the rest are wrong. Whereas it was your staying power in the training to allow you get to the final destination. Please, place value on the word of God. Place value on the, not just the reading of the word. You have been reading it. Place value on its ability to give you something in life. Look, let me tell you this. If I am your physical father and I have a little estate and you are waiting for me to die so that they can they can share the um, what they call it get the death benefit and share the money listen to what I'm trying to say the physical land and the territory you have can be seized by the government as simple as that they just say we need it and we will think of what to do another government will say it was not me the past government has gone and never will come forever but when god gives you a spiritual inheritance no man no tribe they may hate you but my brothers and my sisters when a key is given to you the key is given in a way and a manner that god will cause nations to pass through that door it's impossible to ignore you these are the truths i have found there is rest when you find this all this fear up and down how will my future be will i be great will i eat will my children eat those questions were designed to be answered naturally when you follow the pace of god's training there are many questions we ask now there are questions because we are jumping classes if you stay with god there are some questions you will not need to ask 
believe me the kind of questions you ask will tell you what kind of student you are when you are a proper student the responsibility of the spirit of god no there there you won't even know when you enter certain dimensions that others are praying for because your heart is with him and you're saying lord guide me curriculum after curriculum no rushing no comparison i stay with you five years others have moved forward they have jobs and they have this and you are moving around like a thief across the earth and say lord what am i god say you you are my son at least know that one for now even if you don't know what i called you to do behold what manner of love what what is greater than that one lord help me who am i i'm moving around like cain and god says don't let the devil cheat you just walk with me and in one year god will look at you and establish you with a grace and people will look at you and say ah, ah, i used to know pastor femi unfortunately you used to know him that him has died died in training and resurrected with another life the son of man in power and glory he passed through a doorway in the spirit called galatians 2 20. now he has come out with a new light a new grace are we learning something already God bless you bless you guys thank you we must have passion for the word of God I will touch a bit on something that I thought I would have the allowance to preach this year in fact when the Lord put this in my heart I said oh Lord but I've cried to you again and again to allow me preach this and um, I honestly thought we'll be able to have the series um, but maybe tonight I may just do a little introduction on it um, it's very powerful very powerful Kai. God thank you thank you There are things when you find in this kingdom please listen to me there are things when you find in this kingdom god hell and men will know you found something there are things when you find only god will know you found it there are things when you find only men will know but there are things when you find god men hell will know by, by his grace you have been given something and this is what i'm guiding you to understand do you know what i'm doing to you i'm reconstructing your understanding about god and the correct approach to life now you may not see the value in what you are receiving now but my brothers and my sisters give god time and be patient with yourself and watch the wonder that you become So tonight, I will just do an introduction of it, true riches. Just an introduction. It's not part one. We have a series next. We we'll, 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 we'll transfer it to next year. But, and, and don't think I'm talking about money at all. Settle down and listen and let God bless you. Because when we hear riches, the first thing we think about because of the way i don't know if it's the way our country is, is going all the way you know once people just hear riches a lot of people are very happy this is a very spiritual teaching in fact riches is really spiritual luke chapter 16 and verse 11 luke chapter 16 and verse 11 read with me believers one two read Ah, that's not you be delivered from let's read one more time one to read uh-huh hold on it's a question who will commit to you so this one is not an achievement people commit it to you listen 
who will commit to your trust the true riches unfaithful mammon the word unfaithful suggests instability is that true something that is not reliable and it says that if you are not faithful with the, in your righteous mammon who will commit to your trust when i saw this scripture it blessed and changed my life who will commit to your trust true riches there's something in this kingdom called true riches and the bible says that the basis for access to it among other things is faithfulness listen very carefully and then that this dimension of spiritual blessings that the bible calls true riches is a commitment meaning that god observes and sees your faithfulness listen carefully he can allow you to do whatever it is that you're doing but whilst you're doing it he's observing you and that you get to a point where you pass that spiritual test and like a report card god calls you and says i give you something called true riches and he says that if you are unfaithful with unrighteous mammon who will commit to you that means aside from god who else has that access he's not just trying to tell you the, he's saying who else who else can commit to you this mystery that we call true riches thank you ephesians chapter 3 we'll read from verse 2 to 8 listen very carefully and you understand something powerful tonight Paul is speaking now. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, verse 3, how that by revelation, listen, he made known unto me, what? The mystery. By revelation, he made known. I didn't search it out. He brought it and gave it to me. As I wrote afore in few words. We are reading to verse 8. Verse 4. Whereby when ye read. Ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. 5. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men. As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. And of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. 7. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. 8. <laughs> Listen, it says unto me, Paul now, Paul is looking at the excellency of what he has found and saying, Lord, do I deserve this? Listen, it says unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is this grace. So it's a grace. Is this grace given? What is the grace? That I should preach among the Gentiles. Help me. The unsearchable riches. Not just the gospel. That I should preach the unsearchable unfathomable riches look at the description that is used there he didn't say that i should preach the gospel that i should preach they, they are mysteries the bible says there is a grace that this grace can operate in a man and grant him uncommon understanding to these mysteries that the bible calls the unsearchable riches of christ these are very deep spiritual things. Listen. And these are the spiritual blessings by which the dominion of the saints is established upon the earth. That the dominion of the saints is not just established because all things have, you know, you have dominion. No, no. Prophetically, the dominion of the church has been established. But in experience, we are yet to come into the fullness of that understanding. Paul was speaking to the church, the Hebrew church, and he told them, he says, he was quoting Psalm, Psalm 8, you know, that you have put all things under his feet and all of that, and he says, but we do not yet see all things. The unsearchable 
riches of Christ. What is it? If I ask you, define for me, because this is in the Bible. This is the Pauline epistle. What is the unsearchable riches of Christ? Money? Business? Naira and Kobo? No, sir. May God open your eyes. This is an introduction tonight, but may God open your eyes to see it. My brothers and my sisters, these are the commanders of dominion. These are the systems allocated for the dominion of the saints. The Bible calls it true riches. That man, there is a grace that God by observation, seeing your faithfulness, this one you can never find it. It's not just by fasting and praying. It's not just by reading a book. God comes to you as a reward for faithfulness and grants you a grace that opens you up to a mystery called the unsearchable riches of Christ. This is what the Bible calls true riches. What is it? That's why Paul, Paul was, remember Paul said, I thank my God, I pray in tongues more than ye all. So Paul would be lying if he told us he was spiritually lazy. That man was very diligent in the spirit. And when it came to this description, Paul was even broken. Seeing the level and the gravity of the spiritual investment made upon his life, he acknowledged that unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, was this grace given. That I should be the custodian to release this unsearchable mystery to the body. Until Paul came, no man had seen it. Not even the eye of those who walked with Jesus. They walked with Jesus. They saw many spiritual things, but their eyes could not see this dimension. And that's why Paul said, I didn't see him in the flesh. I was, I was, I was a murderer out somewhere. When Jesus was, I was not even part of the 70. And God just picked a young man on his way to Damascus. A donkey falls down. He knocks me and calls me and says, I want to give you, I want to allocate space for you in this dispensation that you are mandated to be the custodian, the dispenser. That's why he started by saying, look, when my teachings are hard, don't criticize me. There is a grace. I received it. God came to me by revelation and opened up to me this thing. And he calls the name, the caption of it is the unsearchable riches of Christ. I have cried and cried and told the Lord to take away useless knowledge from my life. That means profitless knowledge, both for me and for the saints. That God will grant me access to light and truths that are useful to help men and help my generation first to know him and then to be able to walk in the experience of his life. It's been my prayer it still is my prayer and so when the lord opened me up to this i was so blessed let me tell you sincerely and and god is my witness and i tell you this i'm a i'm a student i'm not ashamed when i learn things from people and i build you know i'm not i'm not somebody who is is, is, is arrogant to say all this and that I ha, i'm a product of many 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 spiritual minds but when it came to these dealings the way I look at you is the same way God was opening me up to the world. See this. This is the key. The mystery that connects to this. And many times when I listen to people, fathers of faith, and I hear them teach, I say, God, this is what you were telling me. I say, because I'm the one who told them to. Not everything in your life will come by studies. I'm not teaching you to be lazy. But we're teaching, we're teaching, this is, this, is, this is a school of the spirit. Not everything in your life will come by studies and lecture. My brothers and my sisters, there are different ways God imparts knowledge to us. One of it is through the stillness of your spirit. Be still and know that I am God. And one of it is access, revelation, spiritual illumination. God just comes to you and grants you access there are things i know today i don't know how i got it the same way you receive a prophetic word i just know that this came to me
What are these unsearchable riches? Right. These are the spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth. These spiritual blessings, these unsearchable riches, what you call true riches, they are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and manifest the reality of God's life here and now. The spiritual blessings that provide an advantage there has to be a system in our dealings with God where we stand at an edge, where we sustain an advantage. It is, not, it is not something hidden that life is harsh. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. It is no secret that ministry without a spiritual advantage is simply a human pursuit of frustration. Men are not that kind to allow you excel without the assistance of the spirit realm. From tribal sentiments to the gates of hell and their manipulations, etc., etc. Everything looks like it's against you. You only rise and reign in life to the degree to which you sustain a spiritual advantage. Are we together now? Yes. Um, come, come, doctor. If you ask us to push ourselves, and he's standing here he's already in a vulnerable position and then you provide a system of support and i'm standing here and someone is holding me these things are my advantage is that true now even if he's stronger than me if he tries to push me on the strength of these factors you see that I will get a dimension of results that is unfair because that's not the true reflection of my capability. I have trusted systems that have provided an advantage. And the Bible tells us that these unsearchable riches, they were designed by God as a proof of his love and his determination to see that the saints reign. So he put together these systems so that by them we can stand strong and shout at the gates of hell and know that there is a spiritual fortification. It is ultimately God that gives us victory, my brothers and my sisters, but the victory is broken into systems. So you can know that God has given you victory and not understand the systems he provided. And you find out that your life consistently continues to be a disadvantage. Are we together now? Bless you. Thank you. So true riches I define are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and to manifest the reality of God's life here and now. We are just doing an introduction. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. The Bible says that they which have received the abundance of grace. Everybody say the abundance of grace. The abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. It says they shall reign in life. They shall reign in life. They shall reign in life. This is what validates the fact that we are kings. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed them should be. It's a mistake there. Because these are the four and twenty elders. Redemption was not for them. So they are speaking over the saints. So the word us there is a mistake in translation. Redeem them to God by thy blood. Out of every kindred. Listen now. Every tongue, every people, every nation. Verse 10. And has made us. Now them you understand. And has made us unto our God. What? Kings. And priests. And the Bible says, and we shall reign. Where? On earth. 
So God's dominion agenda is real. He wants us to reign. He wants us to manifest a dimension of the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Now, I hope you understand, let's, let's refresh ourselves with redemption realities, that Jesus Christ came and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Then he says that no man cometh to the Father except by me. Is that true? So Jesus is the door to the kingdom. He is the only, not even just many, he is the only valid access point into the life of the Spirit. You can manipulate through all the routes into a life of spiritism. But if you want to access the kingdom life, Jesus is the authorized channel, not even an angel. Are we together now? And then the Bible lets us know that the, the, the system that makes for salvation, Romans chapter 8, when you, 10, when you read from verse 8 to 10, you know, the Bible says that you confess with your heart the Lord Jesus, you believe you will mouth the Lord Jesus, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you are saved. The moment you get born again, watch this. What does it mean to be saved, as it were? To receive new life. Very simple. The Bible says that there is a translation. But much more than a translation, the Bible lets us know that this divine life, the life we call Zoe, known by men as eternal life, but it's more than eternal life. It is God's life, a quality, not the kind, the very life of God. Are we together now? The Bible says by the ministry of the Holy Spirit that that life is supplanted. We are refreshing ourselves now. Upon the human spirit so that he that becomes joined to Christ now becomes one spirit. It's a mystery known in ancient times as the salt covenant. Where two people wanting to enter an inseparable relationship bring salt. All of them bring samples of their salt and they mix it together. The condition for separation is that everyone must pick his salt. Are you seeing that now? Yes. Another example I've taught you is called the doctrine of interpenetration. This is the mystery of marriage. The mystery by which two people become one right so a separate entity called a man another separate entity called a woman by covenant they become one one not physically but one in the spirit recognized by god himself are we together now that's why the bible says let no man do asunder it put asunder is a warning because there are implications in the realm of the spirit are you getting what i'm saying now so man receives of that life so way the spirit of god and then among the many things that are that happen to man is that your capacity to now begin to comprehend spiritual things is quickened still by the ministry of the holy spirit and then the operation of the word the logos and the operation of the spirit of god begin in your life you begin to learn the ways of God. And then the word of God begins to wash you. Huh? Like you wash a cloth. Begins to purify your conscience. And then your mind is educated again. The light is driving out that darkness. And gradually, gradually by all those exercises, conformity and transformation. Not impartation yet. Conformity and transformation. These things will remain for a very long time in your life. And then you begin to see the grace speaking. Are we together now? Because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. So it's a laborious assignment because not everything in your mind is of the devil. There are things that are correct. So God will not reset your mind. And then he will do that only with your permission. So it's possible to be transformed one degree in 10 years. That's how slow you wanted God to take you. Are we together now? So you find out that after 10 years, the level of results that should accrue to a life that was diligent with God is not showing in your life. God is limited by your yieldedness, limited by your alignment. This is what now begins to separate believers into different cadres. And then of course now you bring the issue of the election of grace. People who by his predetermined counsel, he has called into certain offices and dimensions. Usually God will do an unusual work in them. 
are we together now a work many times that is more than their personal yieldedness that's why they can't take credit for it it was an acceleration that came because of the assignment they are to provide so they enter dimensions of the prophetic way before they start understanding what prophecy is the only thing they have to do is correct their errors not pray for new visions they have been seeing it since it's just that they have been interpreting nonsense so what they are repenting of is not it's not it's not a hazy vision there are people who even they got born again and there and then they started seeing visions there and then others came from priesthood a wrong key forced the door to, you, you understand what i mean a wrong key of spiritism and tradition opened a wrong door i hope you know that if you meet a native doctor and he opens your eyes even when you get born again the eyes will not close again it's been opened hmm. the only thing is you will hand over the lordship of that sight to god are you getting what i'm saying now because there is a spirit that becomes the gateway of your access uh, believers are you learning something yes to you it looks like you are just seeing visions no there is a spirit that grants you access to that gateway and there is an exchange that happens that you are not aware for being granted access to see things in the spirit and you are routing by a wrong door you will not know because it's subtle after 10 years you find out that your soul has truly been sold to the devil are we together now so when you get born again it's true that your eyes were open with the charm you will stop seeing the demons that oppressed you but the realm of the spirit is already open to you it's true systems of advantage that believers can access and god can grant them grace maybe let me just touch on two or three of them at least we'll, we'll still do them next year the unsearchable riches these are the things that when i look at in my life sometimes i just get down my knees and i say god thank you thank you you don't owe me anything you have been faithful i found them and they are very powerful can i give you the first one the first of these true riches this mystery is called the goodness of God. The goodness of God. What is this? You will know now that it is that grace that is released on you. If this grace is not present, you cannot have conscience. It is the goodness of God that is responsible to plant the need for repentance in men. Not mercy mercy has its place the goodness everything i'm telling you i'll show you from the bible you will now see why god told moses it is my goodness i will allow you to see my goodness the goodness of god allows for conviction of wrongs and repentance but the goodness of god also allows for continual repentance the word repent is not for sinners i've told you this it's not a word that is just left for sinners it's a kingdom expression a system of consistent realignment to a greater dimension of god's glory it's called repentance let's look at a very serious scripture romans chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 just write it down and let's read we're bible students romans 2 one to four ready i will tell you where to join me in the reading therefore thou art inexcusable O man whosoever thou art that judgest listen now carefully he's talking about judgment for wherein thou judgest another thou condemnest thyself for thou that judges does the same things too but we are sure that the judgment of god is according to truth against them which commit such things three and thinkest thou this O man that judges them which do such things and doest the same that thou shalt escape the judgment of god now look at verse 4 read with me please or despised thou the what riches hold on stop let's not rush despised thou the remember we're talking of true riches we're fishing them out now 
that there is something called the riches of his goodness what does it do and forbearance and long suffering not knowing that the goodness of god leaded thee to repentance if you ever repent it is the goodness of god that came to you it's not something you did by your strength to say oh i think I... no the the fortitude to realize the need for alignment is proof that god has been good to you this is the bible it says it is one of the two riches given to the saints the riches of god's goodness hmm. are we still together tonight did you know that the riches of god or the goodness of god is one of the true riches of the kingdom many people say ah oh god when the bible says surely goodness we quote it every time surely goodness and mercy as if we are singing a special number this is a very deep mystery if the goodness of god does not go with you i will tell you i will show you people from the bible the state of a man who has not been granted access to these riches you will see what happens when god looks at people jesus looks and says you are poor in spirit that they are bankrupt he knew what he was saying they had food in their houses but there were certain attributes of the the advantage of god given to the saints it's not there in their life let me show you first timothy chapter 4 and verse 2 this is a portrait of men who have not been granted access to the riches of god's goodness read with me one to read speaking lies in hypocrisy uh-huh having their conscience seared with a hot iron do you know what this means that means you have lost the ability to recognize this is what happens to a man who can carry a knife and tear a pregnant woman bring out a child and kill the person and by the next day he's moving and smiling let me tell you what that person needs is not revival what that person needs is not even mercy what that person needs is the goodness one of the two riches sent like an errand once the goodness of god meets that person he breaks down immediately true riches the unsearchable riches of christ so god looks at men and sends his goodness to them and all of a sudden you see men translating from level to level and they do not know what spiritual mystery is responsible for it keep that scripture again please romans 2 and verse 4 the riches of his goodness not just his goodness the riches the wealth you see that a man who had this was david david knew the goodness of god that's why he became a man after god's heart lucifer didn't have this if Luce, no no demon has this lucifer was not given the privilege of accessing the goodness of god so repentance is in it it's not that he doesn't want to do it has he not been watching believers get born again in crusade grounds why didn't he say god i've watched this thing for a long time let's talk you are my creator no it is the goodness of god that allows men to ever see the need for repentance hmm. evangelists pray for this if you are going for crusades don't just pray for signs oh god let them know i was called <clears throat> pray intelligently lord let there be a supply of the riches of your goodness and you will watch the wonder this is what happens in redemption camp when papa Ia Deboe preaches a simple message and says i will count one to five one and you see people run they don't even know what is bringing them out this is what the generals had charles g finney are we together now they had this in in very abundant measures they understood this wealth of the kingdom called the goodness of god when we say the goodness of god we just mean his ability to be benevolent is more than that the primary assignment of the goodness of god is to create awareness of the need to realign so that we become better reflectors of his glory the bible calls it his goodness 
second peter chapter 3 and verse 9 is somebody learning something tonight he says who shall commit to you if god opens your eyes and you see it and engage it then your life will change the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us what not willing that any man perish but that all should come to repentance this is god's willingness so he sees our family members and he already knows that the way they are going their lives can never reflect god and then his goodness some of you it was the goodness of god that brought you here to koinonia not invitation it was the goodness of god that gave you access to the teachings because god designed that you come to repentance first of salvation and then consistently realigning your life and then you see the beauty and the glory of god come out of your life say the unsearchable riches of christ hmm. let's try another so the goodness of god is an advantage in my life an advantage an advantage what is the advantage causing me to consistently realign so that i get to a point where my life becomes like the brightness of the sun and people say ah, ah what happened and you say god has been good to me now the carnal man would think what you are saying is god gave me favor you understand what i'm saying or god made a helper or like our dear sister shared god made somebody to give me miracle a lot that's true but what really happened was that he caused you to repent to align so that his glory can better find expression in your life the riches of his goodness the next time you see stubborn and rebellious people in your house the key is not counseling the key is intercession for a solid encounter with the goodness of god i i got to hear a very touching testimony of some of these are young people who are very stubborn and the family collected a loan trusting god to help them to start a life and the the young boy and his friend true story they went to carry the car of the the car of the the friend's father you know all these boys that carry cars just to explore their their um, whatever it is and this one would drive and park and give this one to drive and park they were changing and then when it was the turn you see how the devil you see when the goodness of him it was now the turn of the young boy who came from a poor family whose parents now collected loan thinking it to help them start life and the young boy it was his turn he was driving a car of his friend's father and there came a big truck it was a miracle that the boy survived and the family said i'm not hearing anything just get my car and bring for me that was how they had to look for uh, these are people like counsel they had to add an extra look for money because it got to the police station and all of that you see that kind of thing and you will see the boy he will pass as if he gave his parents a word for taking first the goodness of god is not there that sense of remorse he has put the family in in trouble that it would take the prophetic to bring them out not business this one you can't come out just by business acumen it's going to take god to come and lift you out and yet you see the boys moving around and i was just looking at him and he was looking around no remorse look at armed robbers that kill people in the night and by the next morning they pass the same house they rob and you see them smiling during crisis the people that kill people do they die suddenly they are alive they pass a house that they know i'm the reason for the obituary in this house and then they pass and laugh they have not encountered the goodness of god let me tell you it's not good to see somebody who has not partaken of the grace of the goodness of god they are the people we call heartless conscienceless like some of the corrupt people that steal the money of nigerians this is what they need are we together now number two 
Proverbs chapter 5, chapter 4, from 5 to 9. The second of the unsearchable riches is wisdom. Don't assume you know what I'm teaching. Just listen. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 5. 1, 2, read. Question, where? Get pure water. Where? Um, shop. Are we together? Get pounded yam and soup. Where? Restaurant. Get injection for malaria. Where? Hospital. Get wisdom. Where? It's not that I don't want to get it. Where is it? Where do they find it? It says, get wisdom. Then get understanding. They go together. All through scripture. You see this. Now, um, next year I'm going to be teaching you spiritual operations. And one of it will be how spirits work. Is They are all dimensions of the Holy Spirit. But you will notice that there are classifications. There is an operation of the Holy Spirit that never works as a person. Do you understand? It, it must be in twin, walking that way. It was the mystery that Jesus used in sending the disciples. He sent them two by two. Never sent them one. Everywhere you see wisdom, from Genesis to Revelation, you will see understanding going with them. And then sometimes they can form a tag team, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Three of them. A threefold cord. That whoever stands in the middle, it's only God that can take him out. When you stand in the middle of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, a fortification has been built that nothing designed by man can break that defense. Stronger than the wall of Jericho. It says, get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not. We're reading to verse 9. Listen carefully. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Uh -huh. Forsake her not. The Bible personifies wisdom. And she shall preserve thee. Love her. And she shall keep thee. Seven. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting. See it now again. Get understanding. Now see the benefits. Exalt her. And she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. You know what honor is. Causing men to discern, acknowledge, and celebrate your relevance. The Bible says wisdom is in the office of wisdom to bring honor to men. When thou dost embrace her, last verse, it says she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace. You said you are a king, but where is your crown? Wisdom is the holder of the crown. It says she shall give a crown of glory. It is through wisdom we find glory. A king without a crown is not a king. In ancient times when they defeated cities, they not only removed the crown of the king, they removed his whole head and walked with it back to their city. A, a symbol. The moment the king was captured and his head taken, nobody fights again. The battle was over. And now the Bible says that the wisdom shall give you a crown of glory. I can say I am a king, but where is my crown? That there is a spiritual blessing that holds the crown of those who will reign in this life. And the Bible says it is called wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8 is going to be a long reading. Be patient with me. Be patient with me. I want us to pray tonight. These are the systems that will make your life worth living will make your life meaningful by every standard proverbs chapter 8 dot not wisdom cry look at how merciful god is to the extent that wisdom now goes around looking the bible says wisdom is crying crying because of the foolishness of men and what their lives are becoming as a result of lack of accessing her it says an understanding are you seeing them together 
Wisdom is crying, understanding is adding her voice. Next verse. Reading to the end. Two. She standed in the top of high places by the way, in the places of the paths. Three. Let's hurry up. She cried at the gates, the place of exchange, where men enter and go out. Wisdom says, don't pass without me. Don't return without me. At the entry of the city, at the coming eat at the doors. Four. Unto you, O men, I call. Wisdom is speaking. And my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple. Simple there does not mean humble. Simple means unwise. Meaning there is, there is no fortitude for comprehension. It says understand wisdom. And ye fools be of an understanding heart. Hear for I will speak excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. Seven. For my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Eight. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness and there is nothing forward and perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver. Hold on. If I give you wisdom and I give you silver, wisdom says, please don't be foolish to choose silver. Leave silver fast and come to me. And knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies. Two things the Bible says are better than rubies. One wisdom, two a virtuous woman. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Uh huh. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions. I hope we have the grace to continue. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. Please read by the spirit. This is what I want you to do. Now wisdom is giving you a manifesto. Like a gentleman trying to ask a lady out. And he's trying to convince her and give her reasons to say yes to him. And he's saying by me, kings reign. If you see any king reigning on earth, this is what enthroned him. Wisdom. You see any king reigning in business, in ministry. It's not just God. Wisdom. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. 16. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those who seek me early will find me. That means it's not cheap to find wisdom. He gives you a time to seek. Riches and honor. You see why he said you should not choose silver? Because riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. Will soon be there. That I may cause those that love me to inherit. Talk to me. I cause those who love me to inherit substance there is not money substance there is results tangibility i will fill their treasures go ahead the lord possessed me so this is how creation happened through wisdom a house is built wisdom is saying the lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old next verse I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. 
when he set a compass upon the face of the depth when he established the clouds above when he strengthened the fountains of the deep when he gave the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth three more verses or two then i was by him ah, as one brought up with him and i was daily his delight rejoicing always before him rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth and my delight were with the sons of men last verse now therefore unto me O ye children hearken to me O ye children for blessed are they that keep my ways wisdom one of the unsearchable riches that people can possess wisdom and he's saying even god used me for his results that means you are not going to be able to produce any kind and any dimension of result without wisdom what is wisdom the ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom not the knowledge of it not the comprehension of it the ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom is called wisdom what is wisdom the ability to use the word to produce supernatural results that's wisdom my brothers and my sisters i can show you scriptures upon scripture we're doing an introduction today supernatural wisdom that happened to men they rose on account of that wisdom let's look at one scripture first kings chapter 3 solomon god's portrait of wisdom you see that every once and again these men obtain one or more of these attributes and that's what they used to do business in the earth realm and they they dumbfounded the wisdom of men first kings chapter 3 and verse 9 we're reading to verse 13 from verse 9 solomon is praying now god is asking him what should i do and he says give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that i may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this thy so great a people verse 10 and the speech pleased the lord that solomon had asked this thing to 13 and god said to him because thou hast asked this thing and has not asked for thyself what long life neither hast thou asked here it is again unfaithful mammon riches for thyself nor hast thou asked the life of thy enemies but thou hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment 12 behold i have done according to thy words let's see what god gave him i have given 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 i have given thee a wise and an understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee neither after thee shall rise on any unto thee i have also given thee that which thou hast not asked both riches and honor so that there shall not be any among the kings you see that every time kings were there wisdom understanding go to chapter 4 from verse 29 go to chapter 4 and verse 29 chapter 4 first kings and verse 29 read with me please one to read and god gave go ahead solomon wisdom uh-huh and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart even as the sun that is on the seashore the manifesto the attributes of all this spiritual blessing next verse and solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of egypt uh-huh for he was wiser than all men than Ethan the Ezraite, than Heman, than Kalkol, than Dada, all these guys, 
are champions of wisdom they were noted for walking in strange dimensions of wisdom and his fame was in all nations round about 32 for he spake three thousand proverbs and his songs were a thousand and five worship team you see how songs come an encounter with the spirit of wisdom believe me one song that will cause the nations to bless you have you not seen that music artists write songs out of 50 they are like two three you know this is not human you know it by the way it lasts anything that is human has the characteristic of fading the moment time has no power over it it came from the realm of the spirit there are songs that were written when we were born and we're still singing it there were songs that were written last month we're tired of it it tells you the dimension it's not that there, there's something wrong with the song the dimension from which the song came if it is that which is of the earth is earthy that which is of heaven is heavenly 33 and he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in lebanon even unto the high soap that springeth out of the wall he spake a lot he spake also of beasts and of fowls and of creeping things and fish i think there's one more verse and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of solomon from all kings of the earth does this look like gentiles shall come to thy light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising meaning there is what a man can possess my brothers and my sisters you may be in a shrine or you may be in a in a room that is made of mud blocks but kings will come when you possess what kings cannot buy they will come to you the last thing i'm going to do is to show you where wisdom stays because wisdom has a location job chapter 28 from verse 12 true riches when god wants to help a man he exposes you to the unsearchable riches of christ when you possess them you will look weak and frail my brothers and my sisters but when you begin to engage these systems of the kingdom your life becomes a wonder you see do you know why i'm taking our time to teach you these things <clears throat> so that you are not afraid of your results when you don't know the basis of the results that God gives you, even that result will make you afraid because you are not sure of the system of defense around it. Are we together now? But where shall wisdom be found? Remember I asked us a question. He said, get wisdom. And I said, where? So Job now, the man of wisdom, wisest, richest, Job, is having a conversation where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding have you seen that they always go together next verse man knoweth not the price thereof neither is it found in the land of the living ah where is the land of the living that means it's not found here it's not a commodity that is affordable in any market let no man deceive you that he knows where wisdom is found in this earth Mm -mm. it cannot be found the earth does not have the capacity to produce this it can produce sophia human wisdom that is a derivative of trial and error and science but not the wisdom that comes from above the depth said it is not in me the sea said it is not with me that means all these things go back all these things are storage devices on earth they hide things the depth there are things that the depth keeps and those who know it can say bring it out that's why the prophet can stand and look at the ground and say oh earth he said let the people praise thee this earth is not barren let the people praise thee this earth will start yielding meaning that fruitfulness was hidden in the earth <sighs> no wonder seed time and harvest was tied in the similitude of the principle of the earth the earth hides fruitfulness water hides abundance you read your bible everything the birds of the air and everything came out of water and so they said the depth said it is not with me the sea said it is not with me next verse it cannot be gotten for gold 
neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof uh -huh. it cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir nor with the precious onyx nor the sapphire next verse the gold and the crystal cannot equal it and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold no mention shall be made of coral or of pearls for the price of wisdom is above rubies the topaz of ethiopia shall not equal it neither shall it be valued with pure gold 20. whence then cometh wisdom and where is the place of understanding he listed all the choice places in the earth where we can find treasurable things and he says that wisdom is not there seeing that it is hid from the eyes of all the living and kept close from the fowls of the air destruction and death say we have heard of his fame look at this destruction and death also give testimonies that they say we have even us we are still surprised as we destroy people and kill people we have noticed that whoever possesses this mystery escapes us freely he said we have heard of the fame thereof with our ears that means destruction is a spirit not an event it's a spirit it can come upon a family and leave out its characteristics good understanding god understanded the way thereof that's the secret only god understands the way and he knoweth the place thereof hmm. no just just stop at 23 god understanded the way that means if you ever see any man with that dimension of wisdom who gave him that's why i told you it is it is a grace this is not something you walk education cannot give it no when men possess this dimension of wisdom god gave it to men is one of the unsearchable riches of christ solomon possessed it and he did wonders ordinary men have been granted access to this mystery and you can see a very young frail person but carrying something ancient that was with god at creation and wisdom is justified by her children the results show you that this is not human my prayer is that somebody will will catch a dimension of this grace the wisdom of god that you will arise with it my brothers and my sisters and you will see Sheba and her bounties come to you that the things that you seek will come to you of their own accord believe me Satan has deceived us to chase after things God never designed that we chase after things these are the commanders of dominion when you possess them it is impossible there is a testimony even from the realm of the spirit you don't have to plan to be great you just possess this and watch what they do to you the bible says she shall bring thee in other words i can find wisdom from a small room and wisdom says follow me like peter following an angel i step into the place of great men and i say what am i doing here and wisdom says this is where i live whoever possesses me will live with me and you will eat the bread of kings because wisdom brought you there but how many people desire the wisdom of God? So many people will tell you this is an interruption. There are many men of God that will not focus. Listen, many young Nigerians will not focus to listen to the wisdom of God. Just go, all these pastors, you are just lucky, you are anointed, you are anointed, that's all. Let me hustle my life. No, sir. No, sir. Except the Lord builds a house. They labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the bible declares that the watchmen watch it but in vain he said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he giveth his beloved sleep when god gives you wisdom your eyes will see things and it will surprise you what god will make out of your life no man's anger and change what the wisdom of God does in your life let me tell you this learn this early in life whether people believe in you or not it has no effect whatsoever on the forces of the spirit working in your life if you ever look at a man holding 
this unsearchable riches of Christ, your anger is just beginning. You will be angry till you die. It will not do anything. Because death is the last enemy to be destroyed. So if death testifies that I've hands up, then you two hands up quickly. Death is one of the forces that was upon a pale horse in Revelation. One of the four horse riders. And it gives up and says, no, this one is above my power and above my dimension. Wisdom. Knowledge. Maybe let me give us one last one. The unsearchable riches of Christ. True riches. Are you ready? <laughs> the hearing ear. Listen. Access to the voice of God is one of the mysterious riches of the kingdom. The Bible says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. The Spirit saith. The Bible says, The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, are we together now? Some shall depart from the faith, he says, giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons. In the, the Spirit speaketh expressly. That means one of the greatest, you are at a point of advantage. The hearing ear has nothing to do with the prophetic office. It is a grace that God washes your ear with high eyesight so that you have the hearing ear. Is it not in your Bible that thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way? Why? Because there is a way that seemeth right. If all ways were fair and right, there would be no need for direction. The hearing ear is a desperate prayer that everyone must cry unto God and say, Lord, as I'm starting ministry, give me the ear that hears. Let me tell you this. Listen, I have studied the church in Nigeria for many years. I have studied the church in Africa. I have studied men and women of God and respectfully so. I am amazed at the way people move this way when the Holy Ghost moved that way and their ministries ended overnight. Not sin, not disobedience, but that the Spirit of God is going because the anointing goes where the Spirit is going. Wherever the voice of God is, that's where His power is. So if God's voice and power is going left and you are going right, even if it's sincerely so, that's the end of it. My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you, your spiritual investment of 20 years can crash in one day if you are not given the gift of a hearing ear. You will appreciate this in years to come. The higher you rise in ministry, the more desperate you must cry. Moses said, don't send us from here. Moses was not a fool. With a rod in his hand, thy rod and thy staff, he said, no way. If you will know, I need to know you are there. Just because God said, move left yesterday, does not mean he will say, move left today. You must hear him part time. And there is a grace. I have studied this subject of hearing God properly. I can tell you, hearing God even prophets have problem with hearing God let me tell you something about hearing God the gift of prophecy the hearing that comes to prophesy is not the same hearing that comes to give you direction you can walk in accuracy I can look at your name call your number call everything and you will be surprised how stranded you will be to hear the voice of God 
most people don't know because many people are, are prophesying nonsense and lies the hearing ear I, I have a lot of friends and, and, and by God's grace I've met very powerful and accurate prophets and you will be amazed at how stranded they are waiting for God to speak on matters in their lives and yet the accuracy that comes from them makes you believe that oh they are just lying down no where was the hearing of the son of the prophet who died and his wife was about to be taken the children were about to be taken the man was a prophet read your bible and see how many prophets were stranded be careful let me tell you this one day i will teach you how human beings spiritually are like machines i will teach you how god works with men so that just because a man is prophesying and dispensing mysteries let me tell you sincerely okay let, let's put it this way let's use midwives right have you noticed that you can see a midwife who has been giving birth helping people give birth for years and then when she is now pregnant you can be so surprised at the difficulty that she goes through and you are wondering madam with this experience right after her giving birth that almost took her life she will display that mastery again in the hospital prophets cry it's amazing how confused prophets can be I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower listen and I will hear what he will say unto me read your Bible and see people who missed very vital seasons in their lives although their gifts and their graces were still there when I learned this I learned this mystery from Dr. D.K. Olukoya. I was listening to him some years ago and he said something. He said that one of the greatest prayer you can pray is for a hearing ear. And I said, what is the meaning of that? And you see, if God helps you and you walk in a dimension of these graces, you must be careful. Because most times we see the flamboyancy on the gift and you can join men even to deceive yourself that just because that gift that prophetic operation is at work it necessarily means you yourself are accurate it's not true have you not seen people dying of infirmity and healing others what is the mystery behind it if, if you understand what i'm this thing is a very deep teaching that's why the bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling one of the unsearchable riches of Christ is a grace that can be given to men that you hear the sounds of the Spirit. You stand and watch and say, I've heard him. God is saying, go left. And everybody is saying, go right. Use common sense. You know you heard God. When you move left, after five years, people look at you. I have seen a bit of what hearing God can do. This ministry today, my brothers and my sisters, is proof that when men get these unsearchable riches, you won't go down. I'm not one person who comes all the time and says, God said, God said. I'm very careful. Now we have, especially we young people, we have abused God said. Anybody just comes and says, God said, just because you felt like God said. No. Or just because you were under the anointing and your mouth was talking. There are tongues of men. There are tongues of angels. There is the voice of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. You must learn it. There are times when I hear God speak, everyone around me knows God has said, the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. If it is God that you hear, the voice of God will always come with the spirit of faith. And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me it's impossible to hear god and remain and sit down there no 
here and there you can think you had God and he said go to Kano you can say I know I had Kano but tomorrow you just turn but you know God is very faithful he will allow you he knows we are students in the school of the spirit just keep playing around but the day his majestic voice lands on your life there is no power that can stop you let me tell you God is not always speaking God speaks but he's not always speaking a lot of people keep saying God is always speaking no sir are you always talking at least you were created in his image no in the fifth day of the sixth month the word of the lord came the word of the lord came the word of the lord came i've had occasions where god has spoken to me and you have seen it even some of the messages there are messages here that god gave me the titles and I was, I've been surprised at how they seem to have carried an unusual grace because God said it. I stand here many times and I tell you this is what God is saying. And then you begin to see the strange things that he is doing. Let's be careful with this God said. Let's not reduce God to become a man. Now it doesn't mean that you can hear things. There is the knowing of the spirit. There is the witness of the spirit. They all look like voices. You have to be very deep in the spirit to separate between impulses and speakings. They are very different. Just because you had a spiritual communication does not mean God spoke. Remember that in the realm of the spirit, the voice is not the only way to speak. Light is a way of communicating. Love is a language. It can speak. So I can hear. That's the reason why regardless of how sure you think you are, stay for verification. When God spoke about Koinonia to start three days, we had set up the departments. God has granted us grace. I remember, if you remember that time, I was telling you God told me this and that and that. People will come from nations and people. This is what God said. I remember saying it that time. As at the time I said it, I said I saw CGC. This is not what I saw. I saw it broken, expanded. What is this that I'm seeing? I saw people standing, parking, filling the roads. And you know, like, as usual, every time you said God said, you need grace yourself to believe it. Because there are times that you just sit and say, okay, now I'm calm. It's like you, you smoked, uh, 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 what they call this thing. And so you went high and... To you, you can even say, look at the nonsense that I said. And you listen to your own message and say, hey, it's not exactly God. And God said, what are you saying? I'm the one speaking. We were preparing to start packaging our messages. I was thanking God and trusting and blessing him for the anointing he had given me. And just saying, oh God, thank you because you are going to use our media ministry as a very major stream of income to bless the ministry and lift us. And here comes the voice of God. No. In this season, you are not going to sell your messages. Facebook, that time, it was, I mean, it was even the first head of media's Facebook page. And he said, just carry your messages and put them on MP3, put them on Facebook. Don't put the videos, just the audios. And I will give it wings and it will go to the nations of the earth. That's it. My brothers and my sisters, when God says, sit back and watch the power that created the universe push things in your life there are things god has said listen to me there are things god has said when god talks notice that god doesn't care what you are seeing he tells you what you will do and he will do it so i stand upon my watch i'm not in a hurry to move god what are you saying in this season that's the reason why we have workers retreats that's why we have our own retreats a few weeks now i'm going to start my end of year retreat i'm telling you you don't know how excited i am at that time because many of you have gone no disturbances i just shut my phone and sometimes you need to get out of the busyness of life to hear god because there is as it were many voices many sounds and none of them is without significance the voice of house rent can interrupt what God is saying. This spiritual haziness has a science. The encumbrances of life can push you. Your child's school fees. Your life. 
and God is saying fast for three days I say is it God is it a demon is it yes there are times that you check against the word of God but let me tell you there are times only God will help you because even you you don't know whether this is God again most people are not spiritual enough to get to this realm that's why they don't understand years ago I've shared with you the story I had limited transport fare from Kaduna back to Zaria and I took initiative and I went and ate yam and beans also with the money I mean why sit here till we die remember the four lepers at least I should do one I already know that it's only God that will know how to take me back home and I believed with all my heart that I was acting by faith and I did and I stood in front of the junction near Waek office in Kaduna. And a car just stopped and the Holy Spirit told me, enter. Public transport. Oh. I told you the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. It's until the act has been done. When you turn back on hindsight, you say, it has to be God who led me like this. When you are passing through it, you don't see the gravity of the faith you are exerting. It's when you look back and say, eh. I entered that car, I was just in rest. Rest. You are supposed to be afraid. You know how some of these our brothers are around and all of that. Until we pass Jaji. I knew there was no hope. You know, if it's 10 naira you don't have or 20 naira, you can beg. But I mean, when well, well, you don't even have up to 20 or 30 percent of what is the transport fare. And then they now said, everybody bring your money. And people were bringing them. But my, God is my witness. My heart was at peace. This is what happens when it's God that is speaking. You leave him to be responsible for the word. I just obeyed. And that was how someone brought out, paid my transport fare. I dropped at flyover here, entered the bus happy because I felt at least whatever it is, this one I'll pay. And someone knew me in the car and paid. I stopped in front of Northgate with the same money I was with there. It was a message. God was saying, look, I am God by myself. I can do it anyhow. There are times I can send the helper to give you money. There are times I say the helper is in the car. Enter and meet him there. It doesn't matter where the helper is. Believe God enough to go. There are times he parts the waters. There are times he says, walk on it. Let it just be that he see him. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You will need this for ministry. When God sent us to go for our crusade, we got up and moved like madmen. What you see today, my brothers and my sisters, is a product of the voice of God. You need the grace to hear God, not grace for prophecy. Lord, let me hear you. You, you, you. Look, you can pray and say, God, search my frail person. What is the most accurate spiritual mechanism of communicating your voice to me? Help me in that area. There are some of you that your hearing, you have not trained your hearing. If, you, if God speaks through your ears, you will not hear. And so you are going to say, Lord, give me a kind of dream that I will wake up and find myself standing. I will know that this one was not a dream. Let me tell you, if your heart is right, God will give you. There are dreams that no devil can tell you in your mind. Mind? How many of you have had what we call prophetic dreams? You know this one is not my mind. This is the voice of God. Unsearchable riches. The hearing ear, the seeing eye. One time, the storm was boisterous. I think it was Peter or Paul. And it was very obvious they were going to capsize. And all of a sudden, the hearing ear and the seeing eye. An angel appears to him and speaks to him and says, Don't worry, there shall be no loss. And he calmed the people down and said, Hey, relax. An angel has appeared to me. And he has said to me that there shall be no loss. And the Bible says that the storm calmed down and they went safely and arrived an island called Melita. 
when you hear God you can sit in the midst of fire and be singing and people are saying excuse me sir this is fire you say no I'm sitting on the voice of God roasting someone by your left roasting another person by your right and acting as if the fire is not seeing you sooner or later you will need this message sooner or later you will carry destinies come darling you will carry destinies that are behind you and you will need to hear god on behalf of them one day you will have children one day you will have grandchildren and that day this spiritual blessing will be tested one day you will be a man of god with a crowd of people now all of you are waiting for the prophetic word next year whether i tell lies or not you will believe it's left for me and god and if i lie you will punish me are you seeing how risky it is many of you say we are praying for you but you know you are not even serious about what you are saying because you are saying apostle <laughs> the god that called you how you have been hearing him before let him help you just make sure you hear well for us you hear wrongly as a man of god for members and see the way their lives they will obey you against god just because you are fasting for a long time does not mean that your ears will hear it's a grace like earphone god will just put that spiritual earphone and start dictating this is how 2019 will be do this do that do this do that and you say god but like like Eliab, this is good and god says that's exactly the strategy satan wants to use next year use this route and you come out and you say people we are ready to go and they look at you and say ah just like that and god says don't mind them that's always how that's how the nation of israel was that's why moses was angry because he would suffer and hear god and come and talk to them and they would doubt husband please learn to hear god for your wife and your children otherwise one day god will be saying move left and you come with your degree and masters and phd nothing wrong you move left until life changes you in one position change your wife change the destiny of your children many of us sitting down here if our parents had god you shouldn't be at this level is that true there are a number of us who are going to pray. Many of us were victims of the lack of hearing. Many of our parents were called into ministry. They ran away not hearing. And the blessing that would have come to us, if they obeyed God, it would have been easy. You would have been born again since four years. But their disobedience now you got born again at 31 look how hard it is for you to learn the things of the kingdom the hearing ear is a grace man of god please whatever you will do with god i don't care what is not going on in your life if you can hear god hear god on who to marry hello hear god on who to marry you if God planned four children and you give birth to seven, you will take care of four. He supplies. He supplies. Follow his voice. I know you think I'm laughing. This is how our lack of spirituality has cheated people in the world. Before kings went for war, they would inquire of the Lord. Is it in your Bible? Shall we go? And God will say, go. And give them the strategy. We have lost this in our generation so we just step out and and life just beats us into nonsense what of relocating a place where you want to be domiciled in where your family will be raised in you don't hear god i've told you that when the devil wants to destroy some people he will give them visa visa to germany visa to europe just because the interview was easy doesn't mean it's god there are times that satan can give favor to kill you There used to be a guy who used to drive me years ago like maybe four five years ago he was desperate to go to germany i said what is it for i got to find out that he did one funny arranging thing where you do some kind of marriage 
with somebody there on contract then you come prepare papers and then fight divorce and then from there you have your papers and i don't know where that guy is now but he's a classic representation of grace to grass there are pastors that started well they kept navigating ministry well mighty men and women with anointing and then something happened in their life they didn't hear correctly or they didn't hear or they went based on the pride that results can bring no matter who you are if you trivialize the voice of god your head must touch the ground i'm telling you this it doesn't matter what level you get to in life and ministry please hear god as if you are just starting don't say because god has given me this my name is joshua selman god has given me results in ministry if you hear me talk to you like this i know what i'm saying lord should i pursue lord is this your will for me is this your will for me oh there's one conference that i have many great men and women of god some my friends around within this nation around and sometimes they have innocently felt apostle let's put forth a program let's put forth this and that and that people have come to tell me apostle what are you waiting for it's in the blueprint of the ministry to start sunday services what are you waiting for i remember one prophet of god very powerful prophet of god met me and said what are you waiting for start church and i just looked and said god bless you but this year I can't claim I hear everything. But my goodness, there are things this ear can hear. We are going to pray. And when it's time to pray, you are going to cry. If it means you laying hands on your ears to say, Lord, I am reaping the fruit of my not hearing you. It's very clear that my life is the way it is now. Because I'm not hearing you. Are we together? You need to hear God when you begin to hear multiple voices calm down none of them is god let me give you a big secret i don't care what you are trying to hear the moment you are hearing multiple voices shut down none of them is god the majesty and the jealousy of god will not allow you to hear many things his voice is mighty upon the waters when you start hearing many voices rose magdalene mary Janet, shut down, my friend. You are not hearing God. Just shut down. Lord, what is the devil trying to do? You are going to Abuja today. Next tomorrow, you are praying and it's like you saw the map of Kano. And then it's like you now saw London. <clears throat> shut down. Lord, what are you saying? Please hear what I'm, I'm teaching you this based on the word and based on experience. Most people who get into trouble ignore the voice of God consciously somewhere along the journey this is true for marriage this is true for jobs this is true for geographic locations there are men of god that just stand up and go somewhere and just say well after all i'm, I'm a believer in christ i love the lord we are going to plant this church here and they find out they are struggling for a very long time it was bishop oyedeko that was saying how that there was a time that they started the church in ghana living faith was blossoming doing very well and they started the church in ghana and there was so much struggle after like four was it five years or six years or so the increase was not there and he was struggling everything he said he went there by himself to preach and still nothing worked and he went back and said god what is the problem and god said i am not there and he said shut it down immediately There are some of you from this message tonight you need to go and shut down a lot of things in your life because if you check it you will find out there's nothing wrong if you thought it was god you are a student in the school of the spirit oh i thought this business was god but now i'm hearing this is not god oh. i thought that it was god that said i should start the ministry i remember years ago when my well friends and all of that you know not really close friends will meet me and say apostle with the kind of grace you have start a tv ministry start this i told you about pfn when we had our first crusade pfn was willing to give me pastors and give me an auditorium to say start start a church we need you be careful not every good thing is god things don't have to be bad for you to leave them sometimes they can be good they are just not god
There was a time I was preparing, taking my bath years ago. I had a meeting. I don't know if it was in Kaduna or one of these places. I had prayed, fasted, prepared a powerful message. As, as I was taking my bath, all of a sudden, my peace, I will come to that, will discuss peace. Peace as one of the mysteries in the kingdom to bail men out. The stubbornness of men will not allow them understand how the peace of God works. He said he will speak peace. Peace is a voice. Peace can warn you and say you are landing in hot water. Peace can tell you, man of God, this association you are joining is what will destroy you. It doesn't mean they are fake. It doesn't mean they are not of God. But this association is what will bring down your grace. Man of God, be careful. Peace. That's why I told you that these are the systems by which the saints dominate. So you can see that you can have a dream and in your dream you saw a mecca dying. But in the physical, it will never happen because there is a mystery that shields him. The dream you saw was the intention of Satan. But there is a fortification of a mystery. You can have a dream and see Joshua Selman dying in a motor accident. And start praying and say, hey, so this is how our apostle will die. <laughs> I, I guarantee you it will remain as a dream. You don't know what is covering this man that is standing. It's not pride. Do you know how many times death has tested me? Oh. Make him my, 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 make him my. is the author of your struggle i am telling you now struggling is a cause it's a cause from the pit of hell you will never be able to serve god if all you are doing in your life is looking for money because money is not missing you were never supposed to look for it hallelujah you will never be able to serve god if you allow this mammon the spirit that takes the heart of men away from God to begin to pursue other things. Trying to look for earthly relevance. There are people who want to build a house, but they want to build it physically. By putting blocks, you will die trying to build that house. Because there is a spiritual dimension to everything. Give us James chapter 2, verse 26. I hope we'll be able to find it. I'm reserving it for next week. By the way, next week Friday here is going to be a powerful vigil. Hallelujah. Yes. Next week is going to be a vigil. It's going to be a time of prayer and worship. We're inviting guests from all over. Now watch this. The Lord showed me this mystery and it changed my life. I shared it in Abuja. I was reserving it to start the teaching next week. But your hunger has tempted me to go to that scripture and let's Let's touch it a bit. Paul. Watch this. Oh, sorry, James. The apostle, James, was teaching on faith and works, corresponding action. Is that true? And while he was teaching on faith and works, he just feared off and brought a powerful principle. In an attempt to explain faith and work, he, comp he, he compares it with something. He says, for as the body without what? A spirit. Now, all of you watch this guy. The only reason that I can interact with him is because there is a spirit. Is that true? If the spirit leaves this body, what happens? I will reject the body. All of you will reject the body. Are you getting me? And we will have to bury him because it is a body. Though complete, it has no spirit. Are you getting me? Now I want you, media, please keep it there. Keep it there so that we'll... I want you to remove the word as and just read just the first line to the comma. Are you ready? Want to read? 
One more time. One more time. For the body without the spirit is dead. It didn't say for the body of man. For any material thing that does not have a spiritual force backing it, it is dead. For any material business without a spirit equivalent is dead. For any church without a spirit agency backing it, it's like a dead body. It says for a body without a spirit. So, the nation of Israel was like a body without a spirit. And he said, Joshua, you will lose. You need the spirit component. And circumcision authorized the spirit. When the realm of the spirit came, they said, let's go. We can take Jericho. And with one shout, this was what David knew. That as big as Goliath was, he was a body without a spirit. The other people were looking from the three-dimensional realm. Ah, Goliath was shouting and David looked at him. He said, I see a body, but there is no covenant, no spirit. What is the force in the spirit backing you? And Goliath said, am I a dog? Even if you fight me, honor me. And David said, you are joking. You don't know who is talking. I'm not alone. I, I, you are an uncircumcised. See the word again. See the word again. You are an uncircumcised I would have been afraid of you. I would have considered your threat if you were circumcised. Where is the ties that connects you to the realm of the spirit? And he said, I'm circumcised. I may be weak, but there is a government that backs me. When you get this key, my brother, you will run as if Satan does not exist. I promise you I promise you this you can jump around for deliverance you can hop from everywhere but the body without a spirit is dead so your boss in the office knows this and there is a spirit that backs his chair you just get up with your your certificate and sit on that chair and it becomes too hot because all in that office is not just a chair it's a throne there are spirits back in it that's why the bible said they that knew their god they that have connected with a spiritual advantage they shall be strong shall do exploits rise from the realm of being natural and tap into the supernatural realm where the realm of the spirit assists you and your life will be nothing short of a wonder. How many people, listen, I have given up on trying to do things by my strength. Because I know I'm wasting my time. The body. In the same way, the next time somebody stands and threatens you, that is a body without a spirit. See, no matter what talk people talk, I only consider you if you are connected spiritually. Are you getting what I'm saying? I will deal with you. The body without the spirit is dead. I will make sure you leave this job. The body without the spirit is dead. You only pay attention to a man who has risen beyond the three-dimensional realm because there is an assistance, whether demonic or whatever. Are you getting me? circumcision is that key there are many who continue ah we have a an extent we are going to be touching on the matters of the kingdom next week friday i'll be showing you certain secrets of the kingdom that it will make you almost like a drunk man you will get up and jump and shout tonight all we are doing in this miracle service is by an ancient mystery crying and asking heaven and say lord behold the sick people and already in this place there are more angels the arsenals in the realm of the spirit are more than what you know that's always what happens whenever you see me come to sit down i smile around the stage i would have died of hypertension if i'm responsible for your healing but we have made arrangement already we are covered oh yes absolutely
we are covered heaven is jealous jealous to protect his own because God's designated portion listen when you steal your tithe you have not only destroyed your destiny you have stolen from your children every time you don't tithe just know that your firstborn is in trouble if you don't do it again you are affecting your children because he said i will pour you a blessing you will not have room in other words no matter how greedy you are your lifetime cannot exhaust it so when you steal you have endangered the destiny of your children god's portion if anyone ever told you tithing is all about money that person lied to you or was sincerely wrong tithing has nothing to do with money is the law of open heavens let me surprise you if your tithe is ten thousand and you carry one million and give charity foundation and you don't tithe that ten thousand you are operating under a closed heaven don't convince yourself that because you gave one million the heavens is open it is called due process i'll teach you next week there is a protocol to spiritual things are you getting my point tithing is what opens your heavens and then anything you do under that open heavens will prosper if you like carry one billion give charity organization give for the building of church if you are not a tighter i guarantee you the bible says your heaven shall be brass and your earth iron all of them are conductors of heat get set for heat in your life When the heaven is open if not if for nothing we know there is ventilation fresh air the wind comes but when your heaven is brass and your earth is iron many of us here no matter what prayer happens in this that's why we took the communion the devourer is authorized to destroy anyone who is not spiritually circumcised the devourer is not a demon the devourer is a principality even jesus christ acknowledged them that's why he said he is the head of principalities it destroys men's lives on legal basis this earth is too wicked for you to allow chance no i pray for people all the time people with cancers hiv tuberculosis communicable diseases imagine if i refuse to be faithful i would die like a chicken because most times i lay hands on people and there are medical doctors here they know that some of these things are physically not healthy but i'm circumcised my goodness you invoke my name in a shrine both the invoker the invokee and the ordinance it they will burn to ashes ashes no matter how mad a man is he doesn't enter fire by mistake he can cross the road and you say he's a madman but when he sees fire he fears off when heaven backs you let me tell you your life becomes a wonder even to you this ministry is a wonder to everyone not just because we are so smart we are just stupid enough to involve the realm of the spirit because by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne oh sing oh fountains of the deep cry out kadosh you are mighty on your throne Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. Break forth, O Spirit of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. Mighty on your throne. You are 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 mighty on your throne. You 
just two prayer points and then I'll begin to minister you are mighty in this place they that are with us are greater 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 Mantos there shall no man be able to stand against you all the days of your life Prayer point number one. Oh God, by the blood I cry for mercy. Where I have allowed the devourer, I have stolen from my tithe your designated portion. I have allowed the devil deceive me that the tithe is a gimmick by preachers. Now I realize and I ask for your mercy. Lift your voice and pray. Inside and outside, lift your voice. Your tithe is your spiritual circumcision Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Ask for fresh grace. Oh. And make a vow that you will never miss out on your tight again. Make, make a vow. Not by fear. Listen, I give you an assurance and I pledge the name of the Lord upon this. If you take what I've shared tonight, for many of you, this is your secret. It's your password to a mysterious level of lifting. A level of lifting that will surprise you. A 
as much as surprise those who are your spectators God's portion the time his designated portion that makes creation to walk in your favor makes your enemies to walk in your favor mysterious but powerful consistent hallelujah just one more prayer and then we'll trust to see the mighty things that the Lord is going to do I want you to lift your voice in one minute we are going to pray in the next five minutes listen I want you to confront the gates of your destiny and I want you to pray and say you must open up this night lift your voice it's the seventh month the gates of my destiny must open up by the power of the Holy Ghost 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 that must open up some just victorious some in Moses but we just the name of our God just add one more prayer because I see the angels of the Lord already moving let me just add one more prayer listen I want you to pray listen there are giants on every mountain every one of us is holding a prayer request because there is an aspect of your life the devil has refused to let you go but tonight i want you to lift up your voice and prophesy to the heavens and challenge those powers and say i must go tonight lift your voice inside and outside cry I must walk away. That carrying out disease must die today. That cancer must die today. That HIV must go today. That barrenness must go today. That stagnation must go today. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Oh, 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 o
Hallelujah. Now, before I begin ministering, please, can I have that family, if they are here, the family that came with the poison person, are they here? Please, let's save time. If they are here, just signify by wave of hand and then run out here quickly. There's a lot to do tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. While that is happening, I want everybody to follow up on your prayer request. If you are here to write, please one minute so that when we begin to flow, we just move and we don't stop. So you have one minute while you are praying in tongues. Just write your prayer requests very quickly so that when it's time to pass it, you just pass it very fast. Man de kretu shebra de la barada da balada ba. Man ta la doso so predishi la korea da balada ba. Make sure you don't keep silent. Write the issues that have threatened you and watch the God of heaven turn them into testimonies. What can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. So tell me what can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave atmosphere is completely under the influence of the Holy Spirit and that everybody here within this vicinity comes under the influence of the Spirit Lord that no one will walk out of this place without a touch of God hallelujah hallelujah now I'm going to begin to minister to us and while I prayed for this in the course of the week again and again I kept seeing please pay attention can I have strings 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 hallelujah I kept seeing again and again spirits watch this spirits leeching onto people this is what I kept seeing like a man sitting on a man's shoulder I saw this over many people and I said Lord what is the meaning of this and the Lord began to to reveal to me that these are the spirits that cause setbacks upon the lives of men and upon the lives of families and the Lord said when I come up he said the first thing I should do is dislodge those powers dislodge those powers I saw them like a man like a child who sit down on the shoulder of another bringing a resistance to your destiny and I'm about to pray for you right now there are so many people under the sound of my voice so many people under the sound of my voice they must go heaven is here to assist us lift your hands everyone inside and outside there will be such mighty deliverances outside by the anointing of the holy ghost hallelujah I even see someone um, uh, 
suffering from severe migraine but then that migraine you think is just sickness we are about to make a shout brothers and sisters this shout is like the sling of david it looks ordinary but there is a circumcision upon it it's a shout that rises beyond the earth realm it's a shout that rises beyond the intelligence of men it's a shout that is like a battle sound to the angelic it's like a battle sound because your destiny must open up right now there will be mighty deliverances mighty deliverances hallelujah i'm going to pray for us and then at the count of three we are going to shout that name jesus my goodness i sense the anointing of the spirit heavy the power of god will fall upon many of you in a mighty way and you will see this spirit some of you are already feeling uncomfortable it's the power of god especially many outside there will be mighty deliverances lift your hands now thank you jesus father in the name of your son i pray right now and i sound an alarm in the realm of the spirit i decree and i declare by the anointing of the holy ghost that the fire of the spirit oh restrain not your hand oh mighty one we pray that you arise as a man of war there are destinies at the mercy of your touch i pray that by this shout oh god there be a visitation that by this shout oh god everyone here under any spirit help them please help them bring them out everyone here under any influence as we shout let fire catch them and visit their foundations and i command every power that at this shout you will let god's people go inside and outside one two three shout that name i command witchcraft powers of darkness right now right now in the name of jesus inside and outside inside and outside inside and outside the fire of god is falling on people falling on people i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft in the name of jesus lift your hands malatata i'm seeing altars on fire that's what i see in the spirit please bring them out altars on fire one more time we're going to shout physically many of you will feel the fire physically physically right now in the name of jesus one two three jesus! oh yes that's fire that's fire that's fire of the holy ghost Mighty deliverances by the power of the Holy Ghost. You must let them go. You must let them go. Right now. By fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. There are people here. As I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost will locate them. I'm seeing ladies. Ladies, a man comes to you in the night and sleeps with you right now by fire oh god locates them right now right now right now i cost that spirit i cost that spirit ladies ladies a miracle is happening to sisters i cost those spirits i cost those spirits outside 
the fire is falling on I'm seeing a family in the vision of the Lord. Everyone in that family has been tied down by witchcraft. Lord, where is that person in this place? Inside and outside. Right now as I speak, oh. the power of God comes upon that person. Right now, wherever that person is, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, the power of God comes upon that person. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice in one minute. This is what the Lord is telling me. As we begin to pray, miracles will start happening. Lift your voice and break every chain holding you down. Go ahead. This is what God is telling me. your hands i hear my spirit families families god is stepping into families there are altars there are altars over families that are about to be broken as you are standing right now god is going to be visiting your family at that shout again inside and outside make sure you're participating Inside and outside, we are going to shout that name as you shout the name of Jesus. Families, I see altars on fire. Are you ready now? Father, any family under the yoke of bondage, as they shout this name, let there be a visitation. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. And ask him for a visitation again. Something serious is happening in this place. <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah lift your hands i'm hearing marital spells 
marital spells please lift your hands listen hear me something mighty is about to happen here the Lord is ministering to me that there are people who there are spells tying down their marriages whether single or married right now lift your hands as I begin to speak the wind I see like a wind a whirlwind moving across this auditorium oh. it will catch up with some people right now where are they oh God visit them right now in the name of Jesus one more time we will shout that day wherever they are one two three Jesus I'm hearing a name Dorcas. Dorcas, a miracle is coming. Dorcas, an altar is on fire. And I'm hearing the Lord telling me a miracle. Dorcas. Dorcas. Come and stand here. Hallelujah. Who is Israel? I'm hearing a name Israel. Israel, the Lord is ministering to me. Tonight, he must let you go. Let you go. Hallelujah. Now the Lord is showing me a woman. You are here. You had a miscarriage. There is a woman here who had a miscarriage. It's like you had a child and you lost the baby. And the Lord is telling me, please help them, those under the anointing, so that we don't, this place is not rowdy. Listen, let me tell you something. The anointing of the Spirit does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. The anointing does not make the difference. Without the anointing, we are just making noise here. But by the anointing, and I'm telling you this, no matter where you are, whether you are inside here or outside or right at the back, I want you to connect because God is visiting you. And every one of you must have a touch. Dorcas, where is your mother, my dear? Huh? I'm no busy, Zaria, sir. No, I'm not saying. She's Where is she? Mina, Niger State. She's in Mina. Yes, we have to pray because the Lord is bringing a mighty breakthrough for your family. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Hold my hands. Father, change the story of this lady by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. As I hold your hands, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord set you free. Madam, look at me. Where is your husband? At home. Huh? He's at home. Why didn't he come with you? Because there is a breakthrough that is a portion for him in this meeting. Amen. But I'm going to pray for you. Yes, you believe that? Yes, sir. You believe that? Yes, sir. Because this is delay. Yes. I'm seeing delay in your yes, family. Sir. Serious yes, delay. Yes, it's even becoming an issue of argument between you and your husband. Yes, sir. I'm seeing two of you arguing. Yes, sir. But the Lord is saying he is bringing rest to your yes, family. This Amen, night. Sir. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Father, let there be rest. Rest for her. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are doctors. 
Where is your mother, my dear? You. She stays in Kaduna. Why? The same way you are crying is how I'm seeing your mother crying in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is ministering to me. The Lord is saying, why wouldn't she cry when the load is too much on her? Look at me. Like we shared, tell your mother to get back into faithfulness in tithing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And even you, yourself, otherwise you will keep seeing repeated hardship. But hold my hands in the name of Jesus. Lord, bring rest to this lady. Bring rest to her in the name of Jesus Christ. Can, where is the woman that had a miscarriage? There is a woman that had a miscarriage. And the Lord is asking me to minister to her. We may not be able to minister to everybody, but there is, there is someone. Please make sure you don't sit back. The Lord is ministering to me about that person. So that we we'll just, we we'll just pray for her. Dogara. Dogara. I'm hearing a name, Dogara. Dogara. Who is Dogara? You? Your name is Dogara? Yes, sir. Where's your dad? He's at home. In Kaduna. He's, he's at home. In Kaduna. We have to pray for him. What I'm seeing will never. If they are permitting anything, please and please, maybe carry them out. Of We're about to pray, please. Don't worry. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands right now over and I cause that spirit that wants to bring accident. In the name of Jesus, it will not come to pass. We cancel it right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Madam, I want to pray for you. The way I'm holding your hands, that's the way the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's going to begin to hold your hands and that he will cause you to move forward in your life. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration to your life and he's bringing joy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it be. You are the one with miscarriage. Why did you sit back now? Come, there's nothing embarrassing about it, madam. This is a family. Because I'm seeing another one happening and we must pray for you. Yes, sir. It's happening again. Yes. We have to cancel it. Okay. Huh? Yes, sir. It's not a normal thing that you are having miscarriage. Yes, sir. Because there is a spirit that oppresses you. Yes, huh? yes, and sir. that's what is responsible for that miscarriage. It's not just about praying, praying and saying, pray for me. Okay. Do you understand? Yes. It takes the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He will give birth to a baby boy. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that this family will experience your touch. Madam, lay, lay your hands on your stomach. Father, there will not be miscarriage again in the name of Jesus. That's right. I see the Spirit. Let her go right now. Right now, release her completely. I set her free. Lord, you showed me a baby boy. Confirm your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here? Dorcas, your name is Dorcas too. Your name is Dorcas too. Your daughter's name. Just stand and pray for all of you. You are Israel. I'm going to pray for you. Are you a student? We have to pray because I'm seeing the devil attacking your academics. Attacking your academics very seriously. So that they will not begin to tell you your scripts are missing. Huh? And then they will implicate you in the malpractice. The Lord is asking me to minister to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that this is broken. You're all Israel's. And I'll pray with you. Come. Let her go right now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Release her right now and let her go. Right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm looking at this woman but in the realm of the spirit. All I'm seeing is a large snake. That's all I'm seeing moving around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where's the usher? Ushers. Lay your hands on this lady. Just do what I mean. I curse that spirit. You must release her right now. In the name that is above all names. There is no hiding place. The light of God is against you. In the name of Jesus Christ, there is no hiding place for you by the blood of Jesus Christ. You must release this woman. It's a spirit of death. Let her go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, may they experience your touch in the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience your touch in the name of Jesus Christ. 
May they experience, I curse that spirit. Let her go. Let her go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your baby's name. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is liberty for this boy. There is liberty in the name of Jesus Christ. There is liberty. Hallelujah. Now all those who were brought out here under the anointing. I want to, I want to speak to them now. Don't worry. Everyone out here. I speak to the spirits that are tormenting you. You know my voice. I represent the most high. At the count of three. Leave them and go. Right now. One, two. Go, go, go. Out of them. Out. Out of them now. Out now. Never to return. At your Lord. Live your life. Live your destiny. Restoration of virtue. Of grace. I cost that spirit from its foundation. I cost it from the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. All those who are trusting God for jobs, lift your hands. I see a strange anointing in this place. Please, don't withhold your hand. Don't withhold your hand. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. Sister, you looking at me. Rejoice. I see an appointment letter given to you. You, this lady looking at me. I'm talking to her. You are turning back. You. Come, 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 come. I see an appointment letter given to you. There will be mighty miracles of jobs. Hallelujah. Come. This is the person I'm talking about. Because I was praying, and before I would even start, I saw them handing over to you something that looks like an appointment letter. Right? You believe me? You believe me? You will see it and you will stand before God's people to testify. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. The Lord says, I should tell you, he's rolling away your reproach, madam. The reproach of many years is being rolled away in this season. That's what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. The reproach of many years is being rolled away. I'm seeing like a baller. That's what I'm seeing. A trash place where they pour dirt. And I'm seeing a new seed shooting out. And that's what is that's that's like a type of your destiny and the lord is saying i should tell you he's rolling away the reproach from your life in the name of jesus lift your hands and let's release miracle job if you don't believe in it put down your hand command you by the blood of Jesus you foul spirit you have oppressed this body in the name of Jesus I break your covenant I break your ordinance there is a strong spirit that has been oppressing this lady it's not just her can you look at how many people holding one tiny lady I curse you now I curse you I curse you by the God of heaven and I curse you by my office in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I curse that power. Let her go now. Right now. Release her destiny. Release her family now. By the blood of the eternal covenant. She's free. Go. Release her now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Listen, listen. People of God, don't think we are playing games here. I know you may see some of the things happening. These are the powers that have tied down men's life. It's not solved by counseling. You are just moving in the physical, yet in the realm of the spirit you are bound. We are not embarrassed. We are never embarrassed to set people free. Because that's what Jesus said. There's got to be a way of setting people free. Hallelujah. Father,
jobs now in the name that is above all names i want you to receive it as a prophecy over your life lord i declare everyone called jobless here by the favor of god i terminate joblessness right now by the favor of god i terminate joblessness right now anyone who has applied for any job i compel them to call you i compel them to call your loved ones i compel them to favor you here called Agnes Agnes I'm hearing a name Agnes the Lord is ministering to me about one Agnes we we'll begin to pray for the sick shop Agnes I'm hearing the name Agnes God is ministering to me he wants to bring deliverance to the family of Agnes do we have anyone there Agnes Your name is Agnes. Your name too. Your family member. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. We we'll begin to pray for the sick after this. Father, in the name of Jesus, bring breakthrough for this family. You showed me that you're visiting this family. Go ahead and confirm your word with signs following. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Whoever is Agnes in your family, let there be a miracle in the name of Jesus. I want to begin to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing a very serious situation here. There's someone here with a swollen leg. I don't know who that person is. Your leg mysteriously paining you, and it looks it's, it's like swollen. This is what I see in the vision that the Lord is showing me. Who is that person? Your leg is swollen. Where is it? Which of the legs? Look what? Look, if if the devil, you remember I told you this a body without the spirit. Look what is happening to this girl. And then you just come and marry her because you think you want a wife. Are you seeing that? Is is if it can look at one two three four five people holding one person imagine what it would do to someone's destiny i say this without a sense of cynicism many of the people that god is setting free attend churches every week look we need to restore the power of god in our churches and stop playing games with god because God's idea is not just for one platform. Hallelujah. Swollen legs. No, no, no. Don't, you, don't, you don't have to. Madam, I see you too. Your legs. For how long? What's the situation with her? Is her leg swollen? Okay, hold on. She can't walk. Baby, how are you? Hallelujah. Please help us with the mic. Who brought her? Okay, no, it's okay, it's okay. What's your name? Annie. Annie? Your name is Anne. Agnes. Alice. Your name is Alice. You can't walk. You can walk, but your leg is bent. Oh my goodness, look at such an innocent lady. Lord, have mercy on this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that the Lord will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ, let her go back when I begin to pray for the sick and we let them come out. I'm just ministering to special cases. Leg, your leg. All of you who had a dream, in a dream, it's like something was shot. It's like, I don't know if it was an arrow. I'm seeing something that looks like a dream. 
and something was shot on your legs. If the person is not here, I'm seeing someone who had that dream. It's like, I don't know if it was like a gun or something. Or, an, uh, or a, 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 a sharp object. I know that it was, it's like it was shot to your leg. I, I'll pray for you, but this one I'm seeing, I just want to flow as the Holy Spirit is directing me. It's like, it, it looks like a gun or something sharp. Huh? I was shot in the realm of the Spirit. In my dream. You were shot. Fired at you. Yes. And what happened to you? I only I prayed when I woke up. You the prayed dream. when you woke up. From the, dream. the Lord is going to set you free. I know that I've talked to you once. But truly, truly, there is a spirit of delay and stagnation in your life. Because you love God. And God is going to use you in many ways. Not just in the area of the anointing, but even in the area of finances. But as it is, there are many things that are not moving in your life. Lift your hands, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the reason why you redeem is so that we will be free. I pray that you set this gentleman free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Everything that was fired on your leg in Jesus' name, I curse it. Jesus, name. what's happening to you, madam? My leg is shaking. Your leg? Yes. What happened? It's just paining you or it's swollen? It's paining a bit. It's a, for me to stand or to walk. Almost two years. It's broken for me. Almost two years. Which of the legs? This one. What can't you do? I, I can't stand like this. Some people are standing now. For me to stand still. You can't stand straight. It's a problem for me, yes. Is it that it's shorter than another or what was the issue? It's not shorter than another. Okay. It's the same. It's you believe? Coach, as I'm it's huh? coach. Why is she here? She's your daughter. My father was shot in a dream by an arrow. It, according to my dad, it entered his thigh and came and out came through out. the other This thigh. is the person I'm talking about. Yes, and it's, huh? it caused a physical wound on his thigh up to the present. This guy Where is, is he? Here. Is he here? He's in Lagos, sir. He's in Lagos? Yes, sir. You believe God will touch him? Yes, sir. When I pray for you, call him and tell him yes, that he's been prayed for. Yes, huh? sir. Yes, because sir. this is witchcraft. Where are you from? I'm from Benway State. What's your name? My name is Kate. Kate? Yes, sir. From Benway State. Hold yes, my hands. Father, visit this family. You have revealed this in the name of Jesus. I cast this witchcraft. Let it leave your father never to return. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Madam, you believe Jesus will heal you? Yes, I believe. You believe with all your heart? Yes. Madam, what's your situation? I have nail pains. Since Me? I, yes, since I feel sick, they used to swell up. Since, since, I, can't you... walk, since I was sick for six months, they used to swell up. But now, I can't walk, I can walk and be hearing sharp pain. Where? Where is the sharp pain? Okay, how about you? My leg is swollen for five years. Five years? Where is, which one is swollen? Oh, I see. You can't stand? I can't stand for long. For a long time. Mama, how about you? I'm two months now. I started to this leg. Two, two months? Yes. What's happening? I have arthritis. You have arthritis? Yes. Who else? Who again? I have leg problem. Leg problem. All of you, I'm going to pray for you too. Your legs yeah. swollen. Something oh, you are the one who said something beat you. Ah, you are a worker in this place. Let's challenge that devil. She's a worker in this house. There is an immunity. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that this will never return to her again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Never return to her by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to check yourselves after I pray for you. Jesus. Sister, five years your leg has been swollen permanently like that. Have you gone to the hospital? What did they tell you? Nothing was wrong. Eh? Nothing was wrong. Nothing is wrong. Because when a thing is spiritual, no matter what happens in the physical, you may not be able to get an equivalent, um, a, a something to be able to treat. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we cause witchcraft. This is like, right? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command freedom, freedom for your legs. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of witchcraft. Mama, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for you right now. Every wicked spirit leaves you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
Lay your hands on your chest. The Lord is bringing you deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus. This is witchcraft. For five years, I'm seeing a spirit. Go! Go! In the name of Jesus. You can't remain in her. The swollen leg, I command the swelling to go down. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Mama, I pray for your leg. In Jesus' name. I pray for your leg. That's where the pain is. Just lay your hands there. In the name of Jesus Christ. I cause the pain by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please check yourselves. Check yourselves. Check yourselves. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. And tell me if there's any improvement. How many of us came here either for ourselves or for our loved ones to be healed? Specifically in the area of healing. Let me just see your hands. Inside and outside, can you just wave it to the Lord? How many of you came here to be healed? Okay, very quickly, while the worship team leads us in a powerful worship session, want all the sick people to make their way right now. Just, just guide all the people that are under the anointing. Just shift them. Don't drag them around. Please, let's do that very quickly. Make your way out and just stand in a straight line and trust God for a miracle. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. And it will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Look how many people are trusting God for healings and miracles. I sincerely pray with all my heart that every church and every assembly of God will permit the power of God to operate in their place. It is not a thing of pride to have so many, look at, literally, maybe hundreds of people right outside. There is a long queue and we'll have to minister to these people. It's not God's idea to have one superstar. It's just that many people, especially men of God, are unwilling to press into the dimensions that bring them to the possibilities we are going to do this very very fast all of you who are sitting make sure you are connected and um, you are participating while we are ministering to the sick I want you to pass your prayer request ushers you can walk around please make sure all those outside even those on the roadside make sure that we receive their prayer request because I will be laying hands on it immediately afterwards myself and Pastor Jax will be ministering to you Whatever your challenge is, I want you to believe God. While you're standing, lift your voice and begin to say, Lord, I will not return back with this sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I stretch my hands over your people. Let your healing power deliver and save The Lord is healing someone of pile. I'm seeing someone that has suffered pile for a long time. The Lord is healing you right now. You may be in the healing line, but the Lord is healing you right now. Hallelujah. Please make your way. Make your way. It doesn't matter who lays hands on you. There is a corporate anointing in this place. Hallelujah. Please, as soon as we lay hands on you, just go this way very quickly. There are people right to the back outside so that we'll hurry up. And there are still other things we need to do. Praise God. doesn't matter what is wrong with you just a laying on of hands the anointing of the spirit is like a drug the moment it enters your body it begins to work and it brings you healing you will notice that some people are standing for healing but as soon as hands are laid on them devils are coming out because they are the causes of these infirmities
name of Jesus Christ. Hey. Holy, 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 holy. of this brother the legs look at me leave him remove your hand from him look at me have you tried walking before huh? lift your leg try lifting lift it lift the other one lift it lift it Just stand behind him so in case he wants to fall, you hold him. Look at me. See, just look at me, not your legs. Look at me. Come, 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 just come. Don't think of how it will happen. Come, 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 come. come on, you celebrate are mighty Jesus. On your throne. Completely, the legs are open. If you are yet to pass yours, please just do it quickly. Can we all rise? As many as can rise, please, inside and outside. It's a very prophetic moment right now. Jesus, Jesus, my heart will sing. Yeah. My heart will sing. No other name. No other name. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus.
those outside, can we have it quickly? No other name. Hallelujah. We just have five minutes to do this. Listen, I assure you, this is the place where God answers prayers. Hallelujah. I may not be able to minister to everyone individually, but I want you to know that this is a representation of your heart's desire. This is a representation of why you are here. And I'm going to lay my hands as, and as much as possible as a point of contact. All I want you to do is stretch your hands here and begin to receive answers to your prayer. Go ahead, Shibarato Soto Go ahead, stretch your hands as I pray on this. Now God is greater, our God is stronger. Just play the tune while we pray. Stretch your hands and receive. Shaka parata katabaladaba. Lord, we are praying. Please make sure you are praying outside. Stretch your hands towards the screen. Say, Lord, I receive it. I receive it. Lift your hands and stretch your hands here and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. There be testimonies in the name of Jesus. Turn impossible situations into testimonies. Lord, we agree, we agree, we agree in the name of Jesus. Turn impossible situations to testimonies. Stretch your hands and keep receiving. I receive by faith. Come on, pray. All kinds of miracles by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. All kinds of miracles. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your glory. Even as these prayer points, Lord, are lifted up to you, Lord. As your people look up to you, Lord. They look up to you, Lord, from whence their help cometh from my Father. I ask you, Lord, that you send angels, Lord. You send answers, my Father. I pray that God doors that are yet to be opened, be opened. My Father, I pray for healings, Lord. Healings or terminal cases, Lord, let it be turned. Lord, where people said, there's no way, my Father, we pray that doors, Lord, you create streams in wilderness places. My Father, Lord, for people that cast away, my Father, Lord, you make them renowned by the power of your spirit. We ask for your hand to rest upon your people. Lord, we ask that, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, will be given to your people. Answers to prayers, Lord, prayer points that have been pending for many years. We ask that, God, doors be open, Lord. Let miracles, Lord, flow into this house in the name of Jesus. Testimonies, we are bound in great ways, Lord. Unprecedented miracles. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. We ask for healings. We ask that, Lord, 
people that are insane you cause them to be sane in the name of jesus we pray for contract that long delayed lord we pray that lord will be awarded by the power of your spirit in the name of jesus and we pray for a shield of protection over your saints lord in the name of jesus we ask for a revitalization of spiritual lives by the power of your spirit let the fire of god call come on cold altars in the name of jesus let there be healings and touches in families in the blessed name of jesus we give you praise we give you glory for the great and mighty things you will do amongst us lord we give you praise blessed father for we know all our prayers have been answered by the power of your spirit we thank you in the name of jesus we pray hallelujah hallelujah if you believe that your request has been turned into a testimony i'd like you to shout a loud hallelujah shout a loud hallelujah a loud hallelujah a loud hallelujah 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 for many of you it will be like you are dreaming when you will watch one by one by one by one by one by one in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ it's by the anointing it's not by English burdens are destroyed because of the anointing hallelujah this last segment you've heard me say it again this is the most powerful and most impactful segment if you're not a man of the spirit you may not understand what I'm saying please help them this is the most powerful of this segment right now before we go into this where I begin to prophesy there are two dimensions to prophecy there is the revelatory dimension of prophecy that dimension of prophecy gives you direction but the stronger dimension of prophecy is the creative dimension that's when things that are not become by the power of the spoken word never joke with the power of prophecy that's the power that created the heavens and the earth he said i prophesied as i was commanded before we do that very quickly everyone inside and outside there are people here tonight who are saying man of god i want to commit my life to the lord i've seen the miracles i've seen the signs and wonders but my way is not right with the lord you know that right now as you're standing here if the trumpet sounds you're not making heaven you know it right now having a christian name is not the same as having a relationship with jesus there are some you've given your heart to the lord at one time please help the, uh, those under the anointing i tell you there will be a powerful impartation right now i sense a heavy anointing on me already that's why i'm doing this very quickly now if you are here please don't delay us you are saying i want to return home for whatever reason you found yourself living the ways of god and you are saying lord i have heard your word and i'm not ashamed to make jesus my lord there are people in this auditorium young and old there are people by all the overflows right to the roadside no matter how far you are hearing my voice it should not be too far right now i'll just count one to five please run like you are running away from death run like there's fire on the mountain one inside and outside the devil is a liar tonight don't let any spirit stop you Tori. hallelujah hallelujah keep coming god bless you you have won it all for me hallelujah hallelujah you have won the victory sing hallelujah hallelujah you have won keep coming keep coming please hurry up and catch up with us we give you praise. Sasa give you 
every one of you for coming out this is the way to the cross listen no matter what you achieve in life if your eternal destiny is not secured it says this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life but he said this life is in his son until you have the son you do not have that life lift your right hand forget about who is looking at you and in the name of Jesus I want you to pray this prayer from the depth of your heart you are not reciting a poem it's not a special number this is a decision there's one of you here you smoke all these kinds of things Igbo and the rest huh? but as you pray this prayer the power is broken over your life say after me as loud as you can from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart and with everything within me this night I make Jesus Lord of my life I repent of my sins I declare that eternal life comes into my spirit I am born again I'm a child of God from today the power of sin the power of the flesh is broken over me my past is gone and it's over forever I am a new creation in Christ in the name of Jesus the power of sin is broken over my life in the name of Jesus I receive of your life in Jesus name I pray now I stretch my hands over you and I declare the power of sin is broken over your life in the name of Jesus every yoke that has tied you down lets you go forever in the name of Jesus I declare that is a new season for you everything that is a habit and a challenge in your life I release you from it right now every covenant and ordinance of darkness that is the foundation of your trouble by the blood of Jesus it is wiped away I set you free I break you free from every wrong association that keeps you in sin in the name of Jesus Christ I pray hallelujah I want to congratulate all of you for making this decision this is the greatest decision you would ever make in your life hallelujah now very quickly so that you will catch up with us in this prophetic session I want you to follow the gentlemen waving their hands they will have your details and then will follow you up very closely praise the lord just follow them koinonia celebrate them as they go all of you this way this way just follow the gentlemen now everybody rise please i want you to receive this prophetic word this is the seventh month and the bible says revive thy work in the midst of the years hallelujah there is a mystery with the seventh month is the time where God perfects all things as I prophesy to you please I want you to know that there is an anointing that makes it happen hallelujah listen listen don't, don't mind all that nonsense one way to conquer Satan is to ignore him all of that rubbish uh, is, is the devil works in the realm of the senses by the time you focus all your attention on this drama and these things you will waste your time I know you are trying as ushers just stand around Satan does not have authority I want you to know that there is an anointing manifestations are already signs that his power is broken but Satan knows that we walk in the realm of the flesh so he begins to act around your mind to distract you when you ignore Satan is one way of conquering him it does not have the capacity to continue all of this nonsense are you getting my point so this is teaching you so that tomorrow you don't end up wasting your time with all this rubbish and all this drama praise the Lord lift your hands I prophesied as I was commanded 
You are Yahweh. You are seated on the throne. You are Yahweh. Seated on the throne. You are Yahweh. You are seated on the throne. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying right now. By the ministry of angels, are they not ministering spirits? Send to minister today that be the heirs of salvation. I pray for you. Every weakness in your life, Shabbatalakata. That weakness dies tonight in the name of Jesus. Every weakness in your life, that weakness leaves you tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I prophesy to you that Red Sea you are standing before by the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this second half of the year an anointing comes upon you and I prophesy cross every Red Sea cross every Red Sea cross every Red Sea in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every student here oh for there is a spirit in man and the inspiration make it men of understanding i'm praying for you some of you listen as i pray now some of you will literally feel like oil being poured upon your head it's an impartation of knowledge right now oh god i release an anointing to change the story of students at the count of three let it fall right now one two three take it Take it, take it, take it now, take it now. That anointing, receive it for exploits. Shaka ta ta ta, inside and outside. Take it for exploits, exploits, exploits. Hallelujah everything called stagnation in your life that has forced you to stay in one position while you should be moving right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of prophecy I command stagnation to end now 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 my goodness something is happening to your destiny every night season in your life every wilderness experience that has refused to break forth into the day I speak to you right now your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally hallelujah there is something called favor i don't know if you know it but there is something called favor when the favor of god is upon a man your looks your background your qualifications no longer matter let an anointing of favor right now i see at least 100 people 100 people like fire hundred people right now receive it receive it favor 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 upon your life favor 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 parekete embratata lakata i prophesy by an apostolic anointing favor favor favor
everyone holding anything that should be given to you for the next level I don't care where they are but I sound an alarm in the spirit that in this month we are entering called August may that be the month where you receive the keys of the next level receive the keys of the next level the mysteries of the next level every spiritual blindness Shababa. things happen around you you cannot see blood of spiritual vision i pray right now many of you will see like flashes of light as i'm praying right now you will see literally like flashes of light your eyes are opening right now right now right now right now right now by the power of the holy ghost blindness spiritual blindness spiritual blindness be free from it right now be free from it right now be free from it right now hallelujah there are many of us here dreams and visions are prophetic channels where we get insight and direction but for many of us our dreams and visions have either been corrupted or it's no longer there the bible says they will dream dreams it says they will see visions Shakataba, lift your hands there will be an, a restoration anointing right now i just want you to shout i receive listen many things will happen to you many of you is an activation of the realm of dreams and visions where god will start showing you the blueprint for the next level right now in the name of jesus at the count of three as you shout i receive let there be an impartation upon your dream life upon spiritual visions one two three now you receive it receive it restoration of fire fire dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams hallelujah he says what do you have in your house and she said nothing except a jar of oil i want to prophesy upon your gift it's one thing to be gifted but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed there are many of you the gift you have can bring bread to your table but nobody is seeing it it's one thing to be gifted it's one thing to be skilled but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed thou anointed my head with oil and it makes my cup to overflow i prophesy to you whatever has covered your gift whatever has made your gift barren right now in the name of jesus i anoint your gift now i anoint your skill now i anoint your gift now creativity creativity i release it i release that anointing creativity skill expertise competence proficiency in the name of jesus christ listen anybody who has said it's not your time to manifest that you always remain on the background you clap for others but you are not cursed it's God's desire that every man will also come to the lamplight I pray for you 
whatever has kept you behind right now in the name of Jesus I command let the light be on you let the light of glory be on you hallelujah everything you have tried by your strength to do and you have been unable to do throughout half of this year you have tried by your strength i'm releasing grace upon your life right now go back to that same thing and watch how god will bless you through it i pray for every ministry here from glory to glory every church represented from honor to honor new dimensions of the anointing in the name of jesus christ every business here is time to shine come on every business here i strengthen your hand arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine, arise and shine. lift your hands one last prayer listen I want to activate the gift of the spirit without the gift of the spirit upon your life your life will be barren and unfruitful it says for I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye be established I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the Lord himself something is about to happen to your life right now as I speak father I come under this apostolic anointing right now across the length and breadth in this auditorium and outside at the count of three let there be an activation of spiritual gifts one two three take it take it gift of healing word of knowledge gift of prophecy 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 i activate the prophetic i open your eyes spiritual gifts endowments of the spirit I declare that you are supernatural beginning from tonight in the name of Jesus everywhere you go you are supernatural let the anointing upon this house follow you like a shadow I prophesy to you every anointing that is upon this house from today let it follow you like a shadow whatever the anointing has brought to this house let it bring into your life hallelujah lift your hands and give him praise father we give you all the praise I assure you you will know that this miracle service was unusual you will know many of you right from this night tomorrow will not reach you start having your testimonies right from this night right from this night favor alerts calls I mean connections mysterious happenings I speak to the spiritual borders of your destiny and in the name of Jesus I command that every gate that has been closed the Bible says your gate shall be continually open so you have a gate your gate shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles I pray for you in the name that is above all names let everything in your life start working for you command the earth to work for you 
I command the wind to work for you. I command the stars to work for you. Everything that is a disappointment in your life, I change it tonight to a testimony. Hallelujah. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, keep standing, everybody. There are many people outside. Let me speak upon your life personally. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front quickly. We have one minute to do this. God bless you. This is your first time. You are most welcome. There is a prophecy for you. You must carry a signature. No, stand up. Keep standing. Everybody must know you came for Koinonia. Hallelujah. Listen, when you come here, we may not give you hampers, but we give you an identity. You will go back with it and everyone will know that you met the Christ. Make your way to the front. Koinonia, celebrate them. Glorious. Glorious. God brought them by his spirit. Is this the best you can do in appreciation to what the mighty God has done? For us? Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.